there, Rob. That's all I got to say. I know. You don't forget the little stuff. Good, thank you. Um, okay. Okay, so let's do a value study. And this is kind of a um, vertical composition. Being in here. Uh, bring up my little web page. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're okay. And then, so what I want you to do is I want you to think of this thing like, I want you to um, think of this like a, like you've got a point here, you know, it's, it's a little off center, it's about there. Because if you'll notice this part of the sidewalk, it comes almost straight at you. So that's where I'm standing, almost right on, on this side of the sidewalk. And then way over here, you see, get that kind of deal. So then what I want you to think about is, is from there, think of it almost like a door on the end. And then to this point here, right, we, we've got these lines going to this point. So basically, It's, it's one point perspective and you've got, you're inside of a box. So like, here's the point here like this, and it just goes out to all these points like this. I don't see much coming off over here. Just this sidewalk. And yeah, there's more sidewalk over here and stuff, but, but that's what I want you to think about. So could you show us how you got that vanishing point? Well, here's what you do, watch. <clears throat> um, come up this side of the sidewalk and just go arbitrarily. And then, and then I'm seeing the other side of the sidewalk comes up to about to there. So try to get that angle and then it's where they meet. It's where they meet. It's somewhere uh, in the columns of probably a little above the lion's head. And how do you know that? Because if you just follow this line here and this line here, it's where they meet. Yeah, but how do you know just that? Kind of <laughs> if you, I think if you, you just guess, I mean, you, my, mine's actually, uh, mine's actually a little <laughs> off. Probably somewhere in there. If you if you hold your pencil up to the picture, you can see the yeah. angle. You could do that too, sure. If you want to, if you have the photograph, well, here here's what you could do. Let me. Do, do, do. Well, if, Rob, okay. if, if I put my pencil on the photo, um, it, it it reaches behind the lions and not at their head. Okay, let, let's see where it is. I mean, I really, I'm my. If you look at my 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 painting, I'm sure it's not the same as this. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, if I go over here. This is really, you know, you you think it, there's heavy perspective in this piece, but there's really not. Uh, whoops. Let me try a red line. Kind of big here. So if I put a a line right here, going up there to there, and a line right here, yeah, somewhere in there. So that's your vanishing point where they cross. And you see that these radiate to that vanishing point too. See. And it's, it's covered up in leaves, but you can see that uh, And 
Now uh, this, you, you'd think that this side would too. I guess it starts right here, huh? Odd. But that's usually, that's, you know, look, even the bottom of these columns, you usually see they'll follow in that too. But, so, so I'm probably gonna want more height out of this. <laughs> You know, I don't see it in this picture, but sometimes your camera will make those lines curve too, but they're really not. It's just the curve. Yeah, of it'll, lines. It, it can distort them. Yes, it can. You're right. So, anyway, here's what I do I just kind of scribble it out like this and go up and I scribble out the other side and I get what I want out of it. Sometimes I, I'll skew the perspective to fit what I want <clears throat> in the actual piece. Let's see. Uh, here it is. Oh yeah, my perspective and my, look at this. Here's the original. Oh, that's both of them, okay. See that? My perspective, mine is not the same. When, when I'm out there doing my own thing, I don't really care. Look, I, I actually turned this inward. And it could be that I took the photo at a different angle. But my, so mine's here, there, the other one was over there. So, so there, <laughs> no, <laughs> so there we got that and that. Rob. That. Yeah. I, and if we don't have time for this, that's fine. How, how about if the path weren't there, that it was just all bushes and things? I guess I don't understand what you pick to go back into space. All the hardscape, things that are built. Sides of the path. Yeah, she's right. And it's really naturalized by all the nature. So, so here's, here's what it's, it's a really, it's a pretty easy solve because it's just one point perspective. And I know that that's, um, that easy, easy said, but easily said maybe, but, but for, for instance, I have, you know, in my piece, I, I want something like this. I just went like this. I found a point I liked. I didn't want a dead center. And I just sort of radiated all my other points out from it like this. And that's what I'll typically do is I'll lay out a bunch of points like that. Here, I'll, I'll draw them a little darker. So I'll know where my main lines are. Uh, like there's the top, the top of the lattice in here. Um, Kind of come over this way. We've got these ones. See how it's almost like a little doorway? And then the columns come down over here, pretty much in the center of the piece. And you may have a little chair there if you want to put that in. I don't even know if I put that in. Um, don't need that, don't need that. So I usually end up, I, typically when I draw, I'll lay out what's called a grid. I'll just lay out a grid and do all kinds of lines first. And then I, I find my picture in there. Um, so this, like what I did here, the small one. Yeah, you know what, I'll do it on the next one. I'll, 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 I'll lay out a grid for this one. This will be the color one. I'll say, okay, it's above, it's, a, it's around there. I'll lay out a grid and I'll do this, watch. And oftentimes I'll just lay out a whole bunch of lines like this. Like that. See what I did? It, that's loose, right? That's really, I could have been much more technical about it, but I'll lay all those out before I even do any drawing. That's, that's not even in the drawing right there. That's just, that's just a grid that I can work on. Now I'll, I'll show you how I find that in the next one right after I draw this. Okay, so we have this column going up and I don't think I included this much lattice work up, and up, up at the top in mine. So that's fine, I'll have a little bit in there. And then we have some vegetation over there and a couple of lions. 
And I would just, with the lions, just kind of outline them. And I don't, I don't know. I don't think I even put in the chair, did I? Not that I need. I, I just don't think it needs it. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a nice technical move if you want to put that in there, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do all that for this demo. Um, this bush there. And then over the path over here, you just get all kinds of vegetation overlapping, overlapping. Um, and you get these shadows. They go in the back and they, if you can see what they are is they're the columns with vegetation around them. So um, <clears throat> maybe I could put that back there a little further. So I'll hit one column there. And then what happens is that the column gets a little bit bigger as it comes at us. So maybe the next column's there. Maybe the next column's here. And so on. Maybe I'll put a little of that in the foreground. I'm, I'm not going to try to make this like my other painting. Sit here and copy it. Because that's crazy. Okay, we got, we've got... Um, Beautiful roses kind of going up and around. And I would suggest actually drawing some of your, <laughs> your main roses. And we have some of these columns in the back, columns in the back. Most of this stuff is just covered up with all kinds of vegetation. So don't even worry about it. See how complicated it looks, but it's really not. I think those could have been bigger. Something like that. Okay, and then some stuff in the background. All of this is just foliage and roses. Make sure you put in all kinds of roses. Maybe I'll take one and break this stiff line here. Or I'll break it up with some vegetation. There's a lot of vegetation over there actually. And some roses, because it's the Huntington and we know how they are about roses. Couple overlapping each other. Okay, something like that. And, you know, let me, I'm going to mute everyone here. Let's see. Participants. Let me do that. Okay. Did I even pin myself? I didn't pin myself, did I? Well, I didn't pin myself. Gosh. So that means if I, if I accidentally don't pin myself, that means that <clears throat> if you're not muted, it goes to your, whatever you're doing or your face or whatever's on there. So. Just so you know. See, I got to talking again and I forgot to pin myself. Okay. All right. So let's let's do a value study here. And I can tell. Whoops. Yeah, we, we've got all this in the background. Pretty dark. And they're really silhouetting the lions. The lions are a big deal over there. I was, you know, when I was looking for my little, my Huntington piece, I did see a painting I did of the lions. <laughs> There's another one. I have so many paintings of the Huntington. I need to make a book or something. Um, okay. And then all of this vegetation over here is pretty dark. What I'm doing is I'm going to go around my little roses there. Now in the value study, you don't have to get, I mean, that, that might be a little technical for a value study, but I just want to warm you up for the, the actual piece. Because we're going to put down some statements, some big color statements uh, first, not last. We're going to put them in first. Okay, there's a little light here and then we've got these little shadows going across. And 
And then we can easily just dilly dally with the edges. But this is a value study, so I really don't think you need to put in too much edges in there. Let's see. Now let's come over to this side. We have some little bushes with some shadow at the base. And some of these very light shadows on the, whoops, I almost put my brush in my coffee. Don't do that, Rob. Um, very light shadows on the columns. Oops, wrong painting. Very light shadows on the lions. Got a little bush there, something at the base, right by the lions. These steps, a couple of light shadows on those. And some of these branches coming up and over. Could even have one from the other side if you like. And then there's little darks. So let's I'm gonna dig in with some pretty dark stuff in here. And really come back and smack some of those. And they're not extremely dark, but we'll want some darks around the lion, because that's a focal point. Eh, you know, whatever you want to bring out. You might want some dark around some of your roses. I'll put a little bit of dark around those. A little dark down at the base of some of these bushes and up in the corners I'm looking at. Down there at the base of some of these And some very light shadows on the lattice because it's white. And you certainly could over the lattice. I know here there isn't a lot growing there, but oft oftentimes there is. So if you wanted to hang a couple of vines or something down from the lattice, you certainly could make a couple of notes of that. Okay. Now I'm gonna go for the color here. Let me do that drawing first though, like I was showing you. So I laid out a little grid right there, right? Oftentimes I'll do that, just laying out the grid. And I'll say, <laughs> you know, based on this grid, I like, I'd like my sidewalk to look something like that. Um, right, and I want some. Can you move your paper up? Oh, and... sure, yeah, let, let me, I can zoom in on this too. Yeah, so I'll lay out a little grid like that. And, oh, what happened? There we go, okay. And then I'll come across, okay, I'll say, I want about that much sky. And there's a column with some vegetation around the back. Vegetation, vegetation. So we get a little opening of sky. 
all this will be sky with lattice going through it. And I'll throw a lion right there, a lion right there. There's verticals along here, but there's so much vegetation, you can hardly see it. So I think just a, a few little indications of verticality. <laughs> Where did that word come from? Um, in there. There's a little bush. And if you notice, the bush gets a little further as they get toward us. So I'll put a, another bush about here. What is that, garlic or something? I'm not sure. And then, and then we have uh, another one right around there. And then up, we've got just a big bunch of leaves and we have a nice precious little yellow rose right there, which is really great. And you could just put roses wherever you like. I'm, I'm sure <clears throat> this gets much rosier than this, but I see some uh, sort of lavender colors down there. And so I'll just make little little circles around where I want a rose to be. And it goes right up through here through the lattice. Something like that. A couple of roses in there. I have this one. I'm sure there's a rose off that one. And as you can see, you can't really see the columns back here much either. A little bit bigger in the one in the foreground, then it gets a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. <clears throat> and then of course they're covered with vines and leaf, leafery. So that would just be one bush, maybe another one over here overlapping, right behind that bush, and maybe another one back here. And then I'll say my first shadow is about there. I've got another shadow around there. I don't want to get them, I'm starting to draw, so I'm shading it in with my pencil. Not what I wanted to do. You know, I think what I'll do is I'll, <clears throat> I'm just going to put these, these in with the brush. So, because I'm more concerned with the color now, instead of drawing around each shadow, I think it's just fine just to throw them in with the brush. All right, and then, let's see what we got here. <clears throat> All right, you know, I'm gonna try some of some of Dan's cobalt blue. I have found it. I just have a little bit left for this painting today, and that's I think then I think it's over. So a little cobalt blue back there, maybe back there. We'll see. Mine's a little, a little dark for this. It's a very light sky. Like I say, you know, it's your painting. Do what you want. Now, right in the beginning, really clean that brush. And let's just go with some clean water. And I'm gonna try, just take your CAD red, try some, um, and a couple of those, maybe there, maybe there's one up there. Um, 
And you notice how I painted them a little too big. Paint around when you when you put in your little circle where you want your rows. Put in your color a little too big. Because then I can come in. Here's this yellow one. See, I'll put it in a little too big. Now I can come in with green around it and shape it. So oftentimes when I paint them, I don't even draw them in. I just throw in some color and I paint around it and what's left over is the rose. It's a, it's a, I mean, I do that with a whole lot of things, but the, it certainly works in, in anything that's sat really saturated like this. So now a lot of these yellow greens up here are very yellow too. So we'll hit some of that saturation too, right in the beginning. Um, but there's pinks in there. I, if you want to make a nice pink, just, just take a little bit of your magenta. Like a pink there. Just a little bit of watered down magenta makes a really nice pink. And then if you want it more like a deep red, just add, you know, less, less water to it. And, you know, we could just dab these around and See, they're almost the same size, so I'll, I'll make sure I overlap a couple and have a couple small ones beside them. And, but I don't even think I used a lot of roses in this when I painted it. Well, yeah, a lot more than are in the, um, than are in the picture. So now if you'll, if you'll notice, there's quite a bit of yellow green in this. So before I hit any of those dark greens, I'll come back in and I don't want to get too crazy with this because we got to do the, we got to do the painting painting. Okay, let's see. So for all those, whoops, yellowy greens over here, hit those first. If there's some down in the, uh, in the vegetation there, really hit them yellow. You're almost better just to hit them almost just as yellow as you did that. And I'll hit it really yellow. Yeah, one of the reasons I think everybody loves this painting is because it's got so much luminosity. Just the subject matter has so much luminosity to it. And there's nothing wrong with hitting a couple of those uh, yellowy greens in here, and we can show some of those off too. We don't have to hit it such a dark green in here, you know? Goes like your kind of claustrophobic or something back there. Too dark. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit some of those uh, shadows on the ground. And I'm going to go with a violet. I mean, if you want to gray it down, if it's if violet's too strong for you, then just add a little bit of yellow to your violet. Violet is made with your um, ultramarine blue and magenta. There we go. So I'll just hit it in like this. Yeah, that's a nice color. And then we hit the one that's a little bit smaller. And smaller. And they get thinner and thinner as they get further away. So just a line. Not a lion, a line. <laughs> sorry. And I'm not lying. Oh God, I'm sorry. Um, we got we have some shadows on these columns, so I'm you know a lot of it's covered up with a green, but I'm just gonna on the on the left hand side. See some of some of the stuff on the right hand side catches a little bit of um, light, 
like these ones over here, you see the, the right hand side catches the light of the column and the left hand side goes into shadow. So I'm gonna hit some of those, but I'm gonna cover it a lot with green. So I'm gonna leave some, just to you know, kind of dabble in a few little, like that. And back here too, we've got some stuff in there. We have these columns over here, columns everywhere. Very official. And these light ones, these, this lattice work has some shadows going over it. Probably could have gone lighter with the sky. All right. Take that right into there. And very light shadows on the, uh, the lions. And then I come up with some darker green shadows. So Prussian blue and cad yellow make a really nice green. All right, and come on, we'll see these darker greens in here. They're dark. And they have variation to them. So occasionally add a little bit of red to your greens. It'll, it'll kind of naturalize your green. <clears throat> you know, there certainly could be some nestling its way up, up the lettuce. Just painting the shadows of the foliage here. And by the way, you know, I'm not against even hitting a little bit of gouache on these to get it, or hitting a little white on there first, let it dry and then come back and glaze over a little color. So if you happen to mess up and you wanna go back over that, there's always room for that. Here we go, a little shadow down at the base of these, these little, I guess it's garlic or something. They overlap. There's brown too, there's brown dirt. You can make a brown out of just Cad red, cad yellow, and ultramarine blue. And then make sure you dominate it with the red. And you'll get, you'll get uh, you know, a red or dirt. Let's, let's see, is it this pretty light? So I'll just, just hit some. Could be lighter. And then where the shadow goes over the dirt, it gets pretty dark. So let's. Okay. And you know, for some of this lattice work, I forgot to do the, the long ones. Let's see, I'm seeing some of them go like this. <clears throat> Good enough. 
those are my colors. You know, there's definitely more that can be done. And darks at the end. Really running around and hitting those darks. Maybe a couple of these dark. Maybe a little bit on the dark side. Yeah, for this painting, I think that might be a little dark. And that's why I do the, the steadies. Now, I, I, I went, uh, <clears throat> here, I'll show you again. Rob, before you go to the main painting, could you zoom out so we could capture both the um, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Sure. Right. But I, I just wanted you to see here <clears throat> on this is that uh, can you see that I'm using a bluer shadow on the ground there. So and I'm certainly not working from this photograph. I, I probably took this photograph at a different vantage point. But no, no big deal. So I went and I went with I, I feel notice I don't have heavy darks in this painting. So I'll probably ease up on the darks. So yeah, uh, you wanted to see these two together. How's that? Is that what you meant? And slide your um, slide the board down just a bit. Thank you. Yeah. So and these are my general colors. Can you focus it? Yeah. It's not focused. No. no. Put your hand on the board. That's, good. That's better. That looks pretty focused to me. Yeah. Now you're just looking at it from far away. Yeah, I mean I can focus. I have Thank auto you. focus. Watch, I can I can auto focus. This so that's auto focus. But I actually have it on um Uh, manual here. It's usually right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now that we've gotten started and we finished those paintings, let's get started. <laughs> okay. Now here's what's weird about this. This. Um, I can't turn this, when I had my phone, I could turn it vertical or horizontal, you know, the, the, the screen, but I can't turn this, it'll only do horizontal. So what I'll do is I'll just pan this out a little bit. I mean, if I were to do a whole big vertical thing this big, you wouldn't really see much, <clears throat> but that's okay. We'll, we'll just, I'll just do it this small. And I'm going to just use as much as I can. So I'm going to take it actually all the way out. About that big. Let me get that photograph here. All right. I'm just going to save my my lines about there. <clears throat> now I notice that right, this one's coming off and it's cropped up here. I chose to pull my edge of my sidewalk to about there. And where's my little? There it is. Okay. I just need to have my little my little color steady. Okay. So it really helps to do those steadies. You know, I just did a big painting and I did some steadies and um, it really helped. I decided to do it just like I do in my class. 
because a lot of times I just go right into the painting. And um, <laughs> um, Rob, make sure you, you mute yourself. What? Mute. Could you ask everybody to mute, please? I yeah, I'll, I'll mute everyone. There we go. <clears throat> and there we go. There's that, and then we have the columns start around here. It's actually up a little, huh? no, it's about right. Column and a column. And there's just tons of stuff going on back there. Well, we don't have a lot of room on this side, do we? Hmm. So I'm gonna make my columns a little bit smaller and I'm gonna move my, Remove this over a little bit. Change my composition a little bit. Certainly fine to do, unless you're working in a confined space. But you're not illustrators. When I was an illustrator, I used to always have to work in a perfect proportion. And that got tricky. So we'll see, that's my first lattice there. And maybe my second one about here. And then the third one, et cetera, up here. Uh, it's it's kind of thick. And I, I just kind of scribble them out first like that. That in there. And then I have some of the little verticals in there. I come up here. And up here it just turns into, I'll just lose that into purple. Because everything looks better when it's lost into purple. All right, and then we have sort of a step there. Oh, that's the top of the chair, isn't it? Oh, whatever. And then we have our lions. And I, what I do with the lion is I just do them just the same way I did the small one. I just box them in first, like that. Just a shape like that. Kind of comes in and goes out. And then the other one's smaller on the other side and it does a similar thing. It's kind of, covered up by stuff. Uh, I don't even think I put much detail into the original. A little bit. I kind of push, push their chest out a little bit to make them proud. Rob, I thought it was uh, just like a figure statue. Uh, when I saw the original, I didn't know it was a line. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, they do have some. They have dog statues over there. They have figures. All kinds of things. I, You know, <laughs> I've gone over there and taken so many pictures. I, I remember I, when I used to do murals, I would use all of their statuaries and all, all kinds of things. They're painting them and they shipped out all over the world. All right, so we got those. <clears throat> the main feature here. And we have these bushes there, these here. This, you, you get, you basically, you just see a couple of columns in here. And what we'll do is, how about this? I'll make that one there. I'll make this one a little closer to it. 
a little closer. So it feels like it's going away from us. And there's, there's even a couple of small indications of something back there, but I'm not gonna make too much, but that's about all, all I put in. That's it. A bit of some shadow on the ground here. I do want my sidewalk a little wider. More sidewalk. One, make a big deal out of the blue on the. And I make these changes all the time. I um, so feel free, please. So that's how this is really thin. This one's a little thicker, a little thicker. And I think in, in mine, I know these are going at an angle because of the light source. There they are. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I, I put in very few uh, cross shadows on there. I only put in like three or four. So I think I made this one quite a bit bigger. And then, Maybe this one quite a bit bigger. And that's all, like, maybe a little bit here on the edge. Rob, I noticed that uh, the original emphasis on the um, the vertical or the, or the horizontal, the, the, not the pillar, the, the grids on top maybe. So that, that leads the eye more vertical. Mm. The, so you downplay it to the horizontal one. Hmm. So you, what are you saying? You want me to draw it all over? <laughs> no, I, I just no, noticed the, the um, trick you played in the original, which leads your eye more in, inside with the verticals instead of the horizontals. Yeah. On, on the picture, we see more horizontal, right? But on your, yeah, if, if, I, if I get into too much trying to copy the original picture, I, I'm not I, too, I'll, just, I'll get all lost and confused. I just tell you what uh, I just discovered. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm not going to try to copy that original. Uh, we'll just do something different, you know. I, I don't even know what I'm going to do here. But it'll be something pretty similar, I'm sure. Yeah, it... I mean, when I, when I paint on my own, I, I have a rough idea of what I do, and then I just do it. And it comes out like it comes out. Um, Okay, and we do have some columns over here, but you, you can't even hardly see them, so that's fine. Maybe something like that. I mean, you know, technically they should be behind each one of these things, huh? Yeah. Okay, sorry. They want to run here. They want to run there. Bigger one there. I'm just going to keep it loose like that. And I think, you know, oftentimes when I when I go around doing this, I'll just kind of spot where I want. I'm not, you know, you could draw them out like this if you like. So that's how I, if, if you want to be safe, draw, draw little circles around where you want your roses to be. Like that. I'll do some safe ones here. And then I'll show you how to do it the, uh, you know, the, the little less safe, little, a little more fun. There's some lavender down there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, so for the background, I'm just going to start off with a very light blue. And I, it's very light, so I don't even mind if it goes through everything. Oops, I almost put it in my coffee again. Don't put your paintbrush in your coffee. Got to watch that. Start off with something like that. Now maybe even a little bit more over here because who knows what's gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna have any more foliage. Just take it right off. And how about, let's just go hit some of that hard, heavy, heavy saturation around. And anywhere you like, like, like this, just, just hit it. And I hit them a little large. That way, if I wanna go into it, I can, instead of getting real finicky around the edges here. Cause if you hit it just perfect like this, get it all perfect like this. What'll happen is that you'll take the other color into it and you'll wanna go around it and then it'll, it'll take away a lot of the shape you end up with a really small rose. So just, just, just overpaint it. That's my little, my little thing I do. Pretty dark rose, red there. You could put as many in as you like. Just don't put in too many. I'm just joking. Just joking. So that's just cad red. You know, I'll try some straight magenta. And you know, that, that can be really pink. So that's a little bit bluer. If I just add a little water, I can get this light one. A few of those round. Sometimes there's two or three overlapping each other, so. Maybe some of that uh, lemon yellow, or whatever you like. You know, wherever you put these roses is kind of up to you. It doesn't matter if it goes into the background because look at all the green back there. It just gets swallowed up into the green. It won't matter. And you know, I have all this yellowy, if you'll notice that lemon yellow looks almost, almost green in itself because it's your cool yellow. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit some of that yellowy green all around. Now I'm gonna throw shadows over this. So you'll lose 80% of this green. And any kind of roses you want to put in there are fine. Sometimes I, I'll put another rose right over the green. I mean, it won't come out as saturated, but sometimes I don't want all that saturation. You know, it's a painting, so you do whatever works for you. And there's some of that yellow, yellowy green. I am throwing just a smidge of um, uh, Prussian, Prussian blue in there. Right up.
catching that luminosity. And I'll paint some of those shadows right over this. So see how it's really not as hard as you might have thought. It looks complicated, but I think when I did it too, I was a little intimidated. How am I going to do this? Or not intimidated, but I, I was thinking, you know, I'm going to have to put on my my thinking cap on this one. And I'll leave a little bit because I'm going to put in some shadow on these columns. Not very much, but here, here and there. Shadow on those columns. These in the background too have, um, it's a little grayer in the background. So I add a little bit of red to your green back here. I think it's really dark. <clears throat> just dry brushing some edges in there, just get some Leafage. <clears throat> now I'll show you something illegal. <clears throat> because you know, in a watercolor, you always have to do your darks last. <laughs> but you know, when I was taught how to paint, <clears throat> one of my teachers said, you know, it's a good idea to establish a dark right away so then you can relate all your other color, your values to it. So, why not just hit a little focal point in there? While it's wet, it'll kind of bleed out in there a little bit. Yeah. So we've already got a light, a medium, and a dark. <clears throat> you could do all your darks last, but I'm just showing you, you don't always have to do everything by the book. Uh, I, I certainly don't. I do what's right for the painting, in my opinion, and then I... Take it from there. Okay. Let's paint some of these shadows, all these light. Let's, let's do these lighter shadows first with a light lavender color. Again, um, if you use magenta and ultramarine blue, you get a really nice light. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, and I'm gonna leave a little light on the front of that column like that, see? Just like that. Maybe on this one. I want a little bit redder on this one. Rob, what color did you start initially with the blue on the columns? Is that? So ultramarine blue and magenta. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.
can't believe the names came to me on that one. Wow. Usually I have to sit there for five minutes thinking, okay, um, it's a, that one that starts with a U. And so it's about the same value on these that go across. So I'll just take those across. <clears throat> now you might think that's darker, that that lattice is darker than the green, but remember we haven't put the darks in these greens yet, so. I'll put some of these going across there. Oh, that's what happened, huh? I went with a little bit of bluer on this one. So I'll vary the colors. Maybe I'll just take a little ultramarine blue and throw that in there too. Why not? Get some of that in there. Right up to the top. And then these columns will all have, um, these will have color on the, on the left side, you know, because the light's coming from this way. So we'll take and put some shadow on this left side. And it does get, you can, might be able to see a little bit of light on the right side. So what I'll do there is just take a wet brush or you could just leave it with a hard edge. I don't mind, but See, I'll just wet that brush. I'll wet that edge there. And then I'll come over here. There's another one. And wet that edge. Whoops. And over here too. Just a feeling of maybe over here too. I'm only hitting parts of it because the, um, the, the foliage will go over it and cover up most, you know, I'd say 90% of these columns is covered up by leaves. So if you want to get really technical on those, that might be nice. But I'll fade this just with a little water, just fade that into the light. And then on the ground, ultramarine blue again. I'm gonna go pure ultramarine blue and see what happens here. So I can always add a little bit of magenta to it. Ooh, neat. Went a little dark on that one. And I don't hate it, which I think I'm going to leave it seriously contrasty like that. Wow. I like the blue. 
and the blue reflects the sky. So, and what happens is you get all this these this leafage around the outside. So you might want to keep keep your outside edges kind of rough. And you notice how I'm putting all my strokes down horizontally because it's a horizontal surface. If you notice these shadows on the ground are much darker than the shadows that are on the columns or the, the uh, lions because the ground is darker. And it comes up and goes up and over stuff. So we'll, we'll see how I handle that later. I feel like a participant in this whole thing. I'm not, you notice how I say, we'll see all that, that'll, we'll see all that ends up later because I don't really even know. For, for me, that's what painting's about, it's, it's just the adventure. So we, we've got one here. And there. And there, maybe. And I'll hit some of these. Good enough. I see some lattice work on the side here too. That, that can be kind of a couple little pieces of lattice I notice on the because they, they grow, I mean they grow. <laughs> they they're up on the sides of these things and they just kind of go like that. And as I put in my lattice, you know, my it has these little <clears throat> these little lines. So I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna do this. Boom, 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 boom. See how they're all going toward the point? Hard edge. Some leafage on there. Fun. Fun. Oh yeah, these these I didn't know these this lattice came off the edge there. That's kind of neat. I almost said lettuce. In fact, when I was writing lattice down there, I, I wrote lettuce a couple of times ago. Wow, how do you spell lattice? So already, look, look how it lays itself out. It's, it's, it's explained. I'm looking at this and it's just, I'm looking at it going, okay. I think I got a grip on it now. So I'm gonna come into some of those very light shadows on our little lions. Maybe lighter. So you can always go over it again. And I think I I took in some um, reflected light. Hitting the ground and bouncing back up into the lions mostly into like the underside of the lions. Got a couple of stairs in there. So take some of that green, maybe throw it on the top side because there's some there's some green reflected in the shadows that way. And then maybe on the underside, um, because the light hits the sidewalk. Quite often what I do too. I'll hit a little bit of thing, something on the orange side. Cad red, cad yellow. Throw a little bit of orange down below there, see? Just makes it feel light. Like there's reflected light in all this white. Certainly could hit some more reflected lights into these shadows along here too. We have enough. There's plenty. Tell you what though, I would, I, there's orange flowers over there. There's every color of every, every rose you can see. So I'm gonna take some of that cad red, cad yellow and throw a couple of those in there. 
I kind of like these too, these little drips. Why? Because they feel like flowers and they feel like drips. Rob? Yes? One thing I like a lot in the painting that Henry email, you know, your painting of this, yeah. was uh, the stems and the branches. And oh, we're I, not going to put those in. I'm sorry. That, 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 I'm against, no, I'm just joking. Yeah, we're going to put those in here. Because I find those challenging. And you see, you see how we're setting this whole thing up for those, actually, which is very common. I just, you know, like that a big painting I just told you about, I did. I said, I did all this work, building, 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 building. So in the end, I could just put down my little calligraphic strokes of, um, of uh, stems and things. And I know what you're saying. I know they're, and it can be, it can kind of freak you out because you just did all this work and you're thinking, so what do I do? So here's what you do. Take your little scratch piece of paper and try a few, uh, let's see, I'll do it like this. You know, try a few of those, just play with them. Play. I just, I, I think, um, I think about, you know, oftentimes stems and branches and things will go in an arc shape like this. Now they don't, they don't always do the same arc like this. Sometimes they arc like this. So in other words, I'll throw down a, I'll throw down a, a stroke and I'll think about the arc might go down and then it might go back up and then it might turn around and who knows. I just made a figure eight right there, see it? <laughs> so anyway, um, and I also think gradual thick to thin. Don't do this little stumpy thing where you go and then and then and you want you're better off to start off thin like this. You're just touching the surface, whatever, and then come back and thicken and thicken more if you need to. See, so better idea to start off from. Uh, thinner and then work your way to thicker. Now, honestly, there really aren't very many branches in this thing. But before I put those branches in, I want to hit some of the darks. Let's make up some dark greens. Let's make up some shadow greens. I'm going to make, um, I'm going to use Prussian blue and of course, Yellow. Make yourself up plenty. Plenty of this. And you know what? Occasionally throw in a little magenta in there. And sometimes the, the cad red in your in your greens can get to be a little too much. It can really gray out your greens. And I like some cad red in my greens, but but very sparingly. Try a little magenta. It won't let you down. Here's a nice green. I don't know if that's shadow green, but let's see. It's kind of blue in there. I like the blue too. I'm gonna hit some Let's see what ultramarine looks like in there. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay. So I just go in and I hit, I'm not going to cover up all my yellow because I want some of that yellow to look like luminous light hitting, coming through some of my leafage. So I just kind of throw it in like that. I'm getting kind of a dry brush thing going there. That's just fine. If you go a little wetter, you won't get those edges. Um, I 
being you know aware of my little rosies bunches and bunches of leaves and just take them right over because they come way off those columns and I go right into my little roses like that see and I I draw back into it so And I don't want to cover up all the weight of my columns. So it really makes those pink stands out when you hit something dark behind it. And here too. So just hitting the shadows in those leaves. Now I use like a dry brush back here and it feels like thousands of little leaves, but up here I might just use leaf strokes like that because they're way up close to me like that. See, there's perspective in everything. And you will get to, you do it enough and you'll get to a point where you don't even think about it anymore. You just. You just do it. I was listening to an interview on John Mayer. Um, and he was talking about his guitar playing. And he said, you know, they, they asked him some technical question about uh, scale improvisation or whatever and he said he said you know i don't think about any of that anymore all i think about is all i, I just i i feel colors when i play i just work in moods and that's that's very much like painting i mean playing an instrument is very very much like painting So at the base of these little... We, we should see what Jane thinks about that. She played for the Pasadena Symphony. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah and Hector's no slouch. <laughs> On the oboe. There are different kinds of musicians. Yeah. I, I kind of play like free painting. You know, I just... Yeah. Uh, I have to practice my part, but then I, I'm not thinking about much except for just where the music's going. It's very much like painting, actually. It's a good uh, analogy, analogy, I would say. Anal analogy. Thing. Yeah. Well, I think of it. I used to do some picking and grinning myself. Yeah. Do 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 do. You gonna do that Saturday? Do 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 do. Nope. <laughs> I'll just keep it to the art. Actually, I've got a a pretty mean veggie burger. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that for a demo. And she go, Rob, what about the art? I want to do this. No, um, yeah, I tell you, I'm really, really into cooking lately. You gotta have your hobbies. Tape a banana to the wall. <laughs> what was it? Tape a banana to the wall. Tape a banana to the wall. They just sold a fine art fine art piece oh right like seventy five thousand dollars that was a literally a taped banana to the wall with duct tape yeah and i mean i i think that had its place at one time you know uh, but i don't know i mean i remember you know I, we, we we would study art from the 60s where they're doing all this conceptual stuff and i understand you know you go you you're, you're kind of saying that anything can be art, so why not, you know? And they had 
Oh my gosh. A lot of stuff I won't say, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, just, just some strange, I should be a little bit grayer back there. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. You know, Shelly, I remember once they, they had this big show at Art Center. And like a, they, they had a, a yeah, show and a big, and a sort of a big uh, evening out and everybody was dressed up. And, and I guess somebody, somebody dropped a bottle of uh, sh like champagne on the ground. Uh -huh. And, and uh, they were getting ready to clean it up. So they put the, you know, the mop there and everything. And they put this caution tape around it. And there was a crowd around it. Everybody was looking at it like a piece of artwork. And then the janitor comes up and he looks at everybody. He's like, uh, I need to get in there and clean this up. And so he gets in there and starts cleaning up and everybody starts laughing. Because what else are you going to do, right? I mean. Yeah. It's, 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 it goes beyond absurd, really. Yeah. So now what I'm doing is, see, I'm tagging some of these little darks in there. And anywhere you see dark, you, you might even get pretty blue with those darks if you like. You don't have to go green. Here, I'll throw in some of that cobalt. Ooh, I like that. Just a blue. And some of the, some of the darks usually, darks will be at the base of your foliage there. Some of, some of the deep areas in here. Um, we've got all this dirt to hit in here. And then I have to forget about my little plant over there, gosh. What am I doing? We've got uh, sort of bushes and stuff back there. Something dark at the base. And, and I'm just leaving it white for the light on the ground. I certainly could come back. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe not. Take a look at it and assess it. I remember, by the way, I remember now, this is why I'm thinking of that. When I did this piece, these, these people were, were watching me and uh, I, they, were, they were saying, what are you thinking about now? And I said, well, I'm thinking about what color I should paint the, um, the white here. And they go, no, don't touch that. That's the best part. I thought, oh, and so I didn't. <laughs> I think I left it white. So here's some dirt in here. Hit it right over the shadows too, if you like. Probably gets a little bit darker. A little bit of dark in there. In the shadow as it goes on the dirt. All right, just bouncing around here. Bouncing around. I have all this luminosity here. I do want to hit a few little pieces of leafage in there. See how I just, that's it. Just a few little, just to break up that. We've got a few little shadows of these little guys in there. A few of these are just, just shadows.
a little dark at the base. See how that really could be some leaf shadows on there too. All right, so I'm gonna try some of that uh, vine or whatever, the, uh, the leaf. And I just throw them on there like that. I mean, the branch. I just throw that on there like that. And I don't mind that it's going up to this flower here. I like that. Some of this kind of come back to there. I see some kind of going up and around. It's pretty dark though. I think I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. Just hit my hit my little thing on there. Let's I'll hit some lighter ones and what I they're getting lost and found behind some of these, so I just do it like that. I just lose and find my stroke. So be, because some of the foliage is overlapping it, in this case, not so much on this big one. But you know, we can just throw, so throw those vines up, they go up and around, up and around these things. They'll oftentimes go up in here too and they'll go down and through some of those. Add a couple more leaves in there. It looks a little blank. We certainly could add a few more in here. Yeah, that is a little dark. I'm just wetting it. I think the rest was, you know, a lot. It gets a little blank, so I, I will throw in a few, a little bit more of foliage right over some of these branches so they don't look so stark. And you can add little shadows to your roses. As well. Little leaf, a couple of little leaves. In there. Maybe some really yellow ones where the light's hitting it. Maybe a, a couple of roses up there too. We sure got we sure got the red, yellow, and blue thing going on here, don't we? Full saturation. And oftentimes too, you'll get 
roses that uh, shed their petals and they'll come down onto the ground like this. You'll see little, and I, I know this isn't in the picture. It might even be in the picture. Let me see. They keep that pretty clean, don't they? I don't like that. I want stuff on my path. I want to walk on, walk on some rose petals. But, you know, you certainly could throw down a few of those, or it might be, you know, leaves on the ground too. But oftentimes when I have a, a, a stark path like this, I'll throw down a few little petals, possibly pink, maybe yellow, certainly some green down there too. And they get dark in the shadow like this. And then get them lighter out here into the light. Just little bits, you don't need very much. See what I'm doing? If you put a leaf in the shadow, put another leaf in the light right by it, like this. It makes it feel like it's more in shadow. I do that with everything, by the way. I do that with rocks and branches. I'll take a branch going through the shadow and out into the light. I do it on purpose because I want, it, I want to give that feeling that it goes from light to shadow. And, and for some reason, I don't know why, but I've, so many paintings I've done that, and I'll, I'll see that little transition and it just clicks with me. Hey Rob, that's a cool trick. So you yeah. lay your shadows down first yeah. and then you come back in with bright color and the shadow is already there. Wow, that's a great trick, thanks. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I don't always do it in that order, but I think, I think in those terms, yeah, in this case, it, it, it does work. So I'm just spicing the piece now. I'm just adding little touches and a little dark down there, at the base of that. Then ask yourself, does anything look like it's floating? And that's, and that's usually because it needs a little shadow. So now I'm gonna take just ultramarine blue here. And put a little bit of shadow. I'm getting lazy. Get a good one, Rob. All right. And then, so a lot of these branches will cast little shadows down onto, see that? Onto the columns there. Just put them in anyway, anywhere you can. Like around here. You don't even know they're there, but see how 3D is it right there, see? Little 3D. It works, I'm telling you, it works. I could even put a couple of these branch shadows and down on the ground. I never thought of that. Maybe I'm getting too ambitious, huh? Like that. Just to break up the... That's all I'm doing here is breaking things up. I try to look for excuses, but sometimes I don't even have an excuse. I just throw something down there anyway, because it needs, needs to be broken up. Um, oftentimes, when you, if your edges are too harsh, they're too, too much in a straight line, um, don't quit and start another one. Pull some over. 
Pull some vegetation over, see? Over. Looks better. I like that, except when I'm out walking and people here in South Pass like to do that. They, they have some beautiful sidewalks here, but I can barely walk on them. But it's worth looking at it. So I'm just pulling some up and over just to break up that. So now if I do that, see how it needs a little bit of a shadow down on the ground. So I'll put down the shadow now. It doesn't need that much, but watch, I, I just throw down a little shadow like this. Move something down there. Might like cast a little bit of a shadow. And it kind of grounds them, see, that's all. The little moves, but. Oh yeah, we, we could put a little bit of shadow on our on our roses. Well, like for instance, I have this pink. If you if you know if you put something complementary color, it's just gonna gray it. You can just put a darker version of that color like this. Watch this. See? If you really want it to, if you really want it to jump. and stay saturated on some of the foreground ones. So I just took the same color and I put it with, without hardly any um, without hardly any water in it. That's all I'm doing there. And then on an orange. So if you use red, that will darken the color in an orange and it'll still keep up the saturation, see? Now, if you use blue in an orange, that is the complementary color and it probably is the correct color, but you won't get this kind of pop out of it. So there's a, there's a neat one right there. You know, you could just sit here playing with that all day. Paint roses, you know? Not a bad way to spend a day. Take, take some yellow and add a little bit of red to it. Just a touch of red, like if I was gonna shade these, see? That's called shading analogously. So we're using not the complementary color, but the analogous color. The color right next to it on the color wheel. So I use a little bit of red in that color. I want these to stand out a little bit more, so I'm gonna put some leafage around them. Um, put a little red, red around that. And that's if I want my color to stay saturated like in a rose. A rose would be one of those areas. Here's another little trick. Let's nestle the roses in here and don't be too ambitious with this, but watch. I'm going to throw a couple of leaves, see, right over the fronts. See what that does? See how they stand out right now like crazy? Watch, if I just take a couple like over it, just a couple, you don't need very much. They feel like they're in behind stuff and in the painting instead of just standing out. Occasionally you want one to stand out. Like this one, I'll leave that one standing out. But just hide them behind a few little leaves that that's what they do. If they're all standing out, screaming for attention, you know, it'll look a well, it'll look strange. A few, few little more here. This, this branch needs a little love. There you go. A few little you guys. And boy, you never, it never ends with this. Little lights and shadows.
Maybe it needs a signature. This straight here needs a little, I'm just putting a couple little leaves over there, that's all. As little information as needed. That looks a little strange to me. All right, so, and then you mess around with it for a while. Leave it alone. Try not to pick over too much. I might need a little bit of picking over. Just ask yourself, uh, what's, what's working, what's not working in this piece? You know, one thing I also, I'll just, I'll just really quick close this one down with, uh, oftentimes when things are facing downward, like the top of this lattice, I'll hit a little reflected light under it like this, see? Things that are facing downward will tend to light hits the ground and it might catch some in there, so. Ugh. And I certainly could kill uh, the value of this on the, I think I'll leave it though. I think it works. It's pretty stark though. It just makes you feel like sunlight, you know? I am, I'm very tempted to throw down some, something warm on the top of this, but what do you guys think? Wanna take a vote? Should I, should I kill the white here a little bit or do you think I should leave it? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, maybe more dark through the lattice work. <laughs> I'm gonna shut up. Dark's in the lattice. I'm trying to see what you're seeing. Hmm. Yeah, you certainly could throw a couple little, little hiccups through there. Okay, okay. <clears throat> there it goes. Shall we, how are we doing? 11.30, wow. Do you guys need a little bit more time? Got somebody, let's see. Oh, Charlotte and Charlene, okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I did another one on mineral paper that I liked better, but I didn't want to send you both of them. It just okay. 
got kind of dark. This is um, hot press. Hot press, huh? I mean, it's okay. Yeah. Bit, but. Yeah, so the hot press paper will act a little bit differently. It, it doesn't absorb so fast, so you get oftentimes some puddling, puddling marks. Oftentimes you'll get these kind of, you know, hard edge puddle marks. And I, I like it. I mean, it, 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 it just, anything that screams watercolor, I like it, so. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> um, so it, it's a great way. I actually find it a little bit slow. <clears throat> so I'll usually work on two at the same time. Yeah. So the, the puddles will give me, give a little time to absorb. But now this, you're not really getting the little puddly edges though, huh? No, I mean, I, I pretty have, I, I feel like I can do <clears throat> pretty well on that paper. I do a lot of wet into wet anyway. And you did this from your photo, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is I nice. I would have liked to do yours, that. I didn't realize yours was going the other way. <laughs> I don't know why. I should have turned it around, but you know what? I mean, I would have liked to just paint this. This is nice. Yeah, just the little lions. Yeah. Well, thank you. At least I tried. <laughs> so it's a nice piece. I like yours. Um, what do you think about a little more shadow on the back? Yeah, maybe on the back, huh? And then when you do that, make, make sure, like, for instance, what happens is that light hits here and bounces back down into it. So you may get something kind of greenish. Okay, yeah. Um, from the top sides, let's see. You might get something a little green in there. And then any plane that's facing downward, you might get something a little bit orange. Oh yeah. So that, that's what I do. Um, that kind of livens up the picture a little. Yeah. So I put a little green in there, a little bit of orange in there, and you get a little reflected light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Thank nice. you. I like your, I like the way you did the lattice up here. This is really cool. Your perspective is great. Yeah. Good. See, the lines really pull you into the piece. I'm getting better. Yeah, you are. That's good. Okay. Thank I mean, you. All right. You're welcome. I want to see my sisters. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. Totally different than me. <clears throat> All right. Lots of white in this one, huh? Well, I think it got a little too overwhelming and no focal point, but it was fun. I'm on hot press paper too. Oh, okay. Now, if you want to, you, you could, um, yeah, you know, that, that's all I have to say is maybe a little bit more definition in an area of focal point. <clears throat> you, 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 what you could do is with your branch here, maybe make it a little bit more distinct. And then if you wanted to, you could come back and maybe silhouette those, those lines a little bit more if you, if you wanted, if you wanted to give it, um, cause right now it does have a very nice overall feeling. And sometimes that's all, you, all I want out of a piece. You don't have to have all the storytelling it, you know, by the way, the, the whole idea of focal points comes from storytelling, okay? It comes from, from artists telling stories with the artwork. So, it, and... Um, I see several animals in my painting too. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of neat to see, well, the, you know, when you have an abstract area, you know, you might actually see stuff in it. So anyway, this is a nice piece of work. Well, it was fun to do. I just don't think that those are lions. I, have, I think I'm gonna, like my sister inked her lions, I think. I think I may do some of that in the lion area. Well, if you wanted to, you could just draw back into them and, and define it, spend, spend a little bit more time. Yeah, I think I will do that. Yeah. I'm using that paint that that lady made from minerals. Oh boy, that's not easy to work on. I know she has very vibrant, vibrant colors. Mm. She doesn't have any cerulean though in her mm. pots. Do you know about Daniel Smith's uh, metallic and and mineral colors? Oh, those yes, mineral colors. Um, I mean, yeah, they're interesting. I don't use metallic colors generally. 
They can add a little sparkle to your piece, huh? <laughs> That's all I need in my piece is some more sparkle. I don't know. It was fun and your demo was great. Well, thank you. All right. Nice work. Nice piece. All right, Katie. Here we go. Are you there, Katie? Maybe I'll come back to her, huh? Or did, did Katie leave? Maybe, I don't know. I hate coming back. I don't know whether... I'm looking for in the gallery view. Oh. Uh, okay. I don't see her. Okay. You know what? I'll just critique that right now then. Um, I hope she doesn't come back and go, what about my critique? <laughs> okay. So see the, the, uh, the leaves in the shadows? So I would have some leaves out in the light as well. And then you see how they're not overlapping each other. So, I would have, yeah, some of these out into the light and some of them overlapping. Let me find a green here. Some overlapping each other as well. That's why I just kind of scribble them down. It, it, I don't know, it's funny. It's almost like when you're loose and scribbly, it, it works out a little bit better. All right, and the lines look a little large, but that's an easy solve. Um, you want to, I, I, I like this, the shape. You know, all you do is you, you could just carve back into it. What do you mean? Is this, is this Katie? Yeah. Hi. Oh, okay. You are here. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm just saying with the background, what you could do with their, with your line, if they feel a little large to you, which is, it's okay if they, if you want to leave them that way. But if you did, uh, you can take that color you're using back here and just carve back into them. So it's an, it's an, I do that all the time. Huh. So if you wanted okay. to, uh, let's say, you know, here and there. Okay. And what else? Now you see the way you handled all this? This is great. See, you took that big sort of complicated area and just simplified it. So now okay. if you do want to put in the, you know, the, that one branch, which isn't all that necessary, but it can, well, it can be. Well, my branch is so subtle, you can't see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, probably because you worked when it was wet yeah. or, or just kind of moist. And if the paper is kind of moist, it'll drink it up and, and you'll lose. So, you know, I, I might just come back and reinforce a couple of those. I like those. Okay. And I, I even came back and put a couple in the lattice. So if you want to bring it across, you certainly could. And then maybe a couple of leaves, maybe a rose here and there. It'd be fun. What I find with the branches is I, I try and then I get, they get too thick and too big and it wrecks the whole thing. So uh -huh. I probably tried to be a little more subtle. Um, okay. So I can go back and reinforce. That's the better way to do it. That is the yeah. better way to do it. But, but practice some on your own. Uh, just practice branches. Yeah. Practice some. You, you, you can look at branches. You can just make them up out of your head. And you'll notice long tapered strokes work better than okay. uh, short fat. When they, when they start off short and fat and they get too skinny too fast, and I call them stumpy. They look kind of stumpy. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, you don't have any of that in this piece, but um, so I like the way you handled your foliage. Nice. Good. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be so um, finicky. And then oh. oftentimes when I have a big area like this, I might throw a couple like, like these little leafage things you did here. I might throw in just, uh -huh. just a couple little, just to, just to say, you know, there's, there's a, there were a couple of leaves overlapping and that'll, that'll make it feel like things are overlapping and overlapping and overlapping. That's this whole piece is just an exercise in overlapping. Hmm. Okay. So, I went over that, I went over that. And then sometimes on the edges of these, 
Uh, because there's leaves and things, I might put in a couple of leafy things along the edges, you know. Sure. Yeah, j just to kind of break up how hard, they, like right now it feels like naked columns. They look hard. Without <laughs> any, they just need a little foliage around the outside, you know. Okay. That's easy enough to do. You can do that after it's dry too. It yeah. Matter. All right. If you wanted to add a little shadow to the back here too. Where? You know. Oh, okay. Okay. So if you don't, just leave it. Okay. It's up to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh huh. And here's Francis. Okay. All right, Francis. Nice color, which I think is the main thing. And what I might do with your, now, if you'll notice, see this, this line here. Yeah. And this line here, they really are, they're almost parallel. You know? Okay, I see. Then this one should be further, it should be more, well, I understand what you mean. Yeah. So they, they are, they actually do taper, so that's good. Yeah. So they will meet somewhere in space, but it's going to be way out there. <laughs> yeah, almost like it's going uphill. So, so I think the thing to do, maybe keep this one like it is, and, and maybe make this one, one a little bit. Either you know a little bit more over there, or here. Yeah, I like it better there. Um, and then so, the. And then you can just you just throw stuff over the top of it. <laughs> just just throw all kinds of bushes over the top of it. And I swear, you would believe it. It's not that hard. Not that hard. Okay, and then I don't like the shadows that I did. They're the wrong color, and they seem to be too dark. A little dark, right? Yeah. So, so what I would do is, uh, you know, oftentimes what, what happens is the shadows are a little bit dark, pretty close to the object casting it. Yeah. And then as you get further away, they get a little lighter. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So what I would do is wet it, wet it around here mm -hmm. and let it sit for a while and then just pat it a couple of times with your, um, with your rag and okay. that'll lighten it up. Okay. Yeah. But I might, I, you know, I might leave it a little dark over here. And I also might see how they, they, they're kind of white right here. I, I would really take that blue right off, right, okay. right, right up and into this stuff. Okay. And some of your shadowy green, I might it, it's, it's pretty distinctly different. And you're like, so what you could do is use this green here as a, as your light coming through the leaves, like you did up in here, this, this light green here. Uh -huh. you, and so what I would do is glaze this with a little bit of yellow. Whoops. A little yellow in there. And then come back with some of that green. Okay. And hit, give it some shadow. Okay, I see. Yeah. I'd say this probably needs a little bit more shadow in this area too, at the base of things. Okay. Down at the bottoms. Um, and then maybe at the end, when you're all done, this looks really nice. Your roses look very, very rosy. Wow. But occasionally just take a couple, like I remember my little, my little trick, throw a couple of leaves right over the roses. Not, not very many, just a couple. And that, that just sort of nestles them in. Okay. Here and there. Not real dark. I mean, this is pretty dark, but. And then they won't stand out so much. They'll just sort of find it. They, 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 they don't stand out so much. They actually just kind of fit in because they're behind stuff. 
I might actually come back here. With some of that shadow color. That's a weird color. Maybe, maybe a little shadow into those. Um, and then we talked about earlier, I, I hit a little reflected light into there too, like a little, little bit on the back, a little, little bit of reflected light in there. Maybe a little orange. Uh, Got the base. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Where? What city? Let's mute you guys. Mute. Oh. Oh boy. I don't even know. Let me mute. Now I have to get out of here to mute you. You see? Oh uh, boy. Where is? Where am I? Oh, I'm still screen sharing this, huh? Okay. Put it in and I'll tell I Okay, George, you need to mute yourself. <clears throat> there we go. There we go. Um, let me do this again. So you see why I oh, do I have the wrong one? Yeah, I do have the wrong one. That's what it looks like on my thing. <laughs> um Okay. Sheesh. Screen share. And it's not this one? Oh, it's this one. Okay, uh, we're on Suzanne. <clears throat> you guys see Suzanne's? Do you see this, Suzanne? Hello? Yes, I, I see. Yes. <clears throat> Great. Okay. Otherwise, somebody's you know making a phone call right right over my crit, right? So I have to. So then I have to get out of it. It's not easy because I gotta get, I gotta get out of this and then get into participants and mute and then come out. It's a lot of it's a lot of uh, steps. Okay. You got a lot of stark um, lights and darks, which which you know, on a sunny day can feel very much like that. Okay, so just, you know, really you're doing everything right. Uh, there's just a few things, a few small things, but actually they can help a lot at, okay. at this point. So what I would do, what I would do is, um, you see your stark edges of the yeah. sidewalk. I would pull more foliage over, more, just go ahead and take some leafage right over that, here and there. And that's one of the things I'll do with uh, some messy fallen rose petals and leaves and stuff too. I'll throw those down on the ground. And let's see. And what it does is I'll use them to break things up. I need a bigger, there we go, right there. So I'll, I'll, put, a, I'll put a few leaves on there, but I actually am pretty strategic about it. I'm using them to break up this line. So I'll put a couple there. And then I'll break, I'll put a couple, you know, dark ones into the shadow there, like we talked about. Okay. And I might even put down a couple of reds and yellows and oranges because that, you know, adds a little color and breaks it up. So, I, you know, all we're trying to do here is break things up a little bit. Like, for instance, you see, you got a line here and a line here. Yeah, it's too parallel. <laughs> It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Well, if you'll if you'll look though, they do. They also parallel this. And they also parallel this, and this, and this. <laughs> See, so all we need to do is break that up a little bit because they're there. It's all up there. Um, but so what you do is you just just take a few little leaves, you know, overlap, 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 and break that up a little bit. Okay. Some shadowy leaves. We'll do that in a second. This is the kind of thing where, where it really helps to have someone else look at your work because they'll see those things right away, but you don't see it in your own work. And I do it all the time. I can't tell you how many times I'll ask my wife, 
hey, well, what do you think of this? And she'll go, oh, um, don't you think that sky's a little green or something? And I'll go, oh, oh my gosh, I meant to change that. Why do you mean, you know, <laughs> or something, you know? So a little bit, you see now on this side, your branches are pretty nestled in. All, everything over here, see, it's pretty nestled in. So, uh -huh. so what's happening is that these guys over here are they're they're just very stark, very very high contrast. So they just need a little, little nestling, you know. Okay. They need a little love. <laughs> they need a hug. So, uh, give them a watercolor hug. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, you know, those are the thing. Those are the only things really that are going on. That, I, that I, I think about those kinds of things to break up any monotony, any sort of line. So we, we still got this line here too, right? So yeah. I can just use a couple of little, little things to break that up and it wouldn't take very much. See, just, just that did it. Uh -huh. Right. So these are very easy solved problems, but oftentimes, you know, we'll look at them and we don't know, we're like, huh, looks pretty <laughs> good, but I'm missing something, you know. Also, let's see here. I wonder if we could, eh, nah, I'd leave that alone. I'd leave that alone. Um, yeah, occasionally, maybe a rose or something up here. What I'm, what I'm, what's happening here is we have this cutoff line where the foliage stops and the lattice starts. Right. What we want is something kind of like a graceful, uh, you want this to just sort of gracefully transition into the lattice. So what I would do is just, just add a few little pieces of leafage up in here and there. Just okay. little transitionary Think of them as now we're transitionary, transitioning to the lattice. Just a transition. Right. Um, okay. There's small things, but they, this painting doesn't need a lot of help. I mean, it, it's not, just a couple of little, you know, nestling in and tuck things in and put them to bed, you know? <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. You're welcome. Louisa. All right, very light, very light and watercolory. <clears throat> That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think what's happening here is that because our because these lines. Are meeting they're they're gonna meet somewhere up in the sky yeah. um it feels like you're going uphill yeah and you know what you certainly could be going uphill I mean, or you, it's possible but but um <clears throat> so uh if you want yeah is there a way to correct that uh yeah let's see i'm not going to say something smart either <laughs> Okay, keep this one the same here. Keep this the same. All right, let me let me do the let me use my little straight lines here. Keep this like that. Make make your vanishing point around here and go like that. So take some of this green. Let me find my little thing here. More into there. Make that the edge of your sidewalk. Yes. yes. Let me take out my little lines here. Um, clear. So all we did was take out, all we did was cut a little bit off the side of your sidewalk. And now they meet down here. Um, now one thing that, well, one thing that would have helped as well is if these lines, if you notice, they're almost, they are getting, no, they're, they're getting bigger. You know what I would do is just put a couple skinny ones at the back here. That's all, that's all I was going to say to do. Okay. Let's see. Skinny.
reach at the lighter blue. And then one more after that, one more skinny one. And just a couple of little skinny ones back here. Like, and keep them really like you're doing dry brushy. Like it's yeah. not, not a big deal. What all I'm trying to do is get the feeling that these things are going, you know, they're moving back in space. If you want to get smaller and smaller, so it gets further away. Um, what else? And we, you know, just like on every, like not everybody else's, but you remember how I roughed up the edges here? So it feel like, like, see what you're doing right there. Mm -hmm. Do more of that. Yeah. And then just remember, keep them like that, real leafy up here. And then as you get back here, just use a dry brush stroke. Right. Because you, you'll have, the leaves will be much, uh, much smaller over here because you're, you're talking about 30 feet away and here you're talking about, you know, five feet away. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> One thing I'm not happy with is the lattice <laughs> for some reason. You mean up here? Right. Uh, yeah, in the back. It doesn't seem to work. I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> um, the secret to that is throw a bunch of vines and stuff over it. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> hide it. <laughs> yeah, I do this too. And, and if my lattice doesn't work, I throw, put more foliage over it. But I, I, I would actually suggest doing that anyway. Um, put, some, put a couple of vines through there, going through here and there, and, and some leafage, and maybe a rose or two. And, it, and keep the lattice. You know, you want some areas where the lattice is, is showing. But maybe a, a rose or something, you know, and, and a whole bunch of leaf because because that'll that'll sort of tuck it in and make it look more nestled in. Right, right. That helps, yes. Now what happened was was because your um your your sky hole's been between it got a little dark on you. Yes, exactly. So they it it, it got a little dark. And, and um, that happens to everybody, you know, you just throw some stuff over it. Mm -hmm. I do it all, I do it in every painting, I think. Great. Except for this one, <laughs> just joking. No. Um, so the sidewalk is not too white, it's fine. I mean, adding- Yeah, I mean, I think the consensus is uh, leave it white. Yeah, right. And I could see, see a little more shading uh, of not only, not I, I would put a little more shading of your columns on here. Okay. Yeah. Or you know what? You know what? Just leave them. Just leave them. Put more shading into the leaves. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think a uh, little more, a little more shading into the leaves here, so it feels like this is the shadow side and this is the light side, because now the right now they're about the same. Yes, that's true. Yes. A little more shading on the on the right side. I think you're you're okay, okay with that. Nice flowers. I didn't, you know, one thing about your flowers though is that if you notice they're very similar sizes. Yes. And they're almost equally spaced. Yes. <laughs> so occasionally, what you want to do is just take a take another rose, and give it a little friend. You know, like yeah. like Bob Ross says, give it a friend. You know, <laughs> maybe you need a little friend there. Great advice, uh, Rob. Yeah. Wonderful. We all need friends. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rob, the watercolor philosopher. Okay. Uh, Robin, hey, hey. All right. Hi, Rob. Nice to see you, Rob. <laughs> Does anyone ever call you Rob? Yeah, they have in my past, yes. Oh, okay. Robin, that's beautiful. It is very light. Now, if you'll notice, you did almost the opposite thing. Um, your, this is perfectly fine. Uh, your, actually, that's about perfect, isn't it? No, I was just thinking. It just looks a little flatter. I, I guess you made the uh, sidewalk narrower or something. Anyway, I like to, I'd like to take a walk on that sidewalk because I like a sidewalk like that. All nestled in and not too pruned or anything, you know. 
Um, South Pasadena. How is it? It's South Pasadena. Oh, South Pasadena. I thought you said, how is Pasadena? Um, yeah, th that's very much like they are around here. Okay. Small things. I mean, uh, I would hit some darks down in the base of these. Maybe darker than that. I'll, I'll just use black because I don't have anything. Just hit some darks down in the base. I wouldn't use black, obviously. I would just use, you know, like this color right here you have. And so as these pieces of foliage go down into the deep parts, they get darker, darker. You're getting sleepy. I'm just joking. <laughs> okay, so I hit a few of those darks in there. Um, now these two stop right here. Do you, do, do you think maybe one of them could go a little longer or maybe this one? I don't like it starting right where there's something going across. I fixed it after I sent it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, a couple of those. And then, you know, I put a couple of leafage on there. Uh, let's see. Otherwise you've got a really nice looking piece here. Um, I like how your foliage is lighter back here and it gets a little bit darker up here. So yeah, on, on, as these go into dark, um, make those darks darker up here and a little bit lighter back here, but just a little bit darker than what's next to it. You see what you're doing right here? How you have that, that foliage fading down into dark? That's all yeah, I mean. Yeah, I like that. Just a few of those little fades. Lay down a little water first, hit a little dark in there, and let it do its watercolor deal. Okay. Yeah. I, I might mess, I might uh, play with these edges here. They're a little hard. And that's about it. I might throw a little shadow behind here. Yes. And that, that's a little stark with my, with my dark there, but you know, a little. A little something back there, a little something back there, possibly. Okay. And then if you want to put any vineage in there. Otherwise, looking great. Very natural forms. And yeah, that, that's, that's one thing to learn by this painting, everybody, is look how natural her forms are. Really natural. One, one just a quick little parting advice is if you look at a lot of your strokes here are right beside each other. So occasionally, like you did here, that was a good move. Occasionally just take a couple of them and, and overlap. A couple overlap, maybe even overlapping the other way or something, but overlap. Take a few that are overlapping. Yeah, very good. And th that really helps those, those, those little guys. That's why in the foreground, it doesn't really matter because you have a few overlaps here. It looks just great. So. Okie dokie. Thank you very much. Thank you. I guess I'll see you Sunday, huh? Yep. That'll yep. be fun. Both Peggy and me. Yeah. All right. That'll be fun. Marie. <clears throat> okay. That looks, like, that looks a lot like my painting. <laughs> Let's see. Um, <clears throat> I like it, nice colors. And oh, you get a little reflected light going in your shadows here of your, I mean, doing uh, shadows on something that's white can, can throw you because remember, white doesn't have any color of its own. It takes on the color of everything around it. So oftentimes if you have like in this case, you might get a little blue from the sky back here. Whoops, got the wrong. You might get a little blue on his, on his back because it's facing up. 
Maybe I'll try this blue here. And even, even on the back of the head. Whereas, you know, right here might be a little bit green as it's facing back toward here. And then maybe under the breast, possibly something orange in, because it's, it's catching light, the warm sunlight that's hitting the white sidewalk and reflecting up into the shadow under here. And I think about all those things as I'm, as I'm, um, here's the old saying, if you guys want to write something down, here's a great old saying. You may have heard me say it a couple of times. So all things that receive light become a source of light into a lesser light. Wrap, wrap your head around that one, right? <clears throat> so, so, under, under, uh, so when, when they say lesser lights, what they mean is shadows. Shadows have light in them. Shadows aren't black. They have light in them, you know? So, so what happens is that the light hits the sidewalk and because it's warm, it, it'll give you a warm reflected light into, into a shadow, especially on something white, especially. But yeah, all things that receive a sort, all things that receive light re become of, uh, you know what I said. No, I'm just, <laughs> like, all things that receive light become a source of light into a lesser light. Is that what I said? <clears throat> Say it one more time, Rob, please. Yeah. All things that receive light become a source of light into a lesser light. So let's say the green received light. And then, so now it becomes a light source and it's projecting light into the shadow, which makes the shadow kind of green. And you'll see, especially in white, take a walk and, um, you know, you can see this at a place like a garden because they'll have statuaries and whatever on a sunny day. You, this is the ultimate place to see these kinds of things happening. But you'll see uh, reflected light into white objects and they take on the color of the sky or the grass or the sidewalk. You know, what's really great at the Huntington Library is they have this terracotta uh, walkway and they'll have, you know, I'll, I'll see people walking on there and all the undersides of like under their chin or whatever will just turn orange, you know, it's just amazing. So anyway, um, <clears throat> So, looks great. Um, maybe a little bit more, little more foliage over these lines or the over the uh, vines. A couple, a little bit. Just to, like I said, uh, kind of tuck them in a little bit. If they're yeah. looking a little stark, like this, maybe yeah. put a couple, couple over here and there. Um, I think what's bothering me is, okay, on the right hand side, at the dark um, foliage at the top, all the strokes are going kind of the same direction towards the kind of say left corner. They're kind of, I should have varied those, the, you know, it just seems like all of them are sort of going that yeah. slant. So just counter that, put it, put in a couple of counter slants into it. like. Like these are all kind of going this way. Yeah, that bothers. Yeah. I said it. So put a couple, couple in going the other way. You wouldn't believe. Just you don't even need very many. Yeah. Just to break that up. Um. And then again, on the left hand side, all the vines are going to the other corner. So I, I played with and I got a couple of them going. Yeah. Or just, just a couple of counters. We'll, we'll work with that. Do you think these shadows should be a little more solid? Probably, yeah. Because, you know, I think they're going across. I mean, now leave it on the outsides, leave it kind of raggedy, you know, like there's like, uh, you know, uh, leaves and stuff. But here, I'll use blue. But yeah, so I would put a glaze over them, just a quick glaze. Just bringing those together a little bit more. Um, and 
then I did, um, I played with it a little bit more and on the left bottom corner, I kind of uh, darkened that whole area just to anchor it. I don't know. I just yeah. kind of felt yeah. like not right. So. Uh, that's, I would do that. It's almost as if you're just bringing this shadow up and over a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And why not? I mean, I think I, I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, looks good. Now, th these are kind of going downhill a little bit. So what, what you can do is just, it's its not a big deal. Um, you know, that might have been the angle of my camera uh, when I- Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's probably that's it. Pretty straight in the, but I know what you're saying, yeah. A couple more little pieces of foliage on there, if, if that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks. Nice looking piece of work. Thank you. Following a great master. Ah, well. Well, golly jeepers. There's Robin. Oh, Robin sent me two. Oh, Peggy's. Oh, Peggy did some too. Oh, hey. Wait, is Peggy here today? She oh. is, but she has trouble unmuting herself, so I'll speak oh. for her. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. Is she? In, I, I didn't know she was in this class. Oh, I knew she was in the uh, other class. Okay. Let's see. Uh, boy, let's see what we got here. All right. Nice work. Here we go. There's your focal point. I might take a few of these shadows and just attach them to the side here. <laughs> just kind of bring them over. Bring that over. And you know, typically what will happen is that the, um, the shadows will be a little darker on this side because they're closer to the object casting it, which would be the columns. And then they get a little lighter over here. So that'll typically be what happens. Um, let's see. I could see throwing a little bit, little bit of shadow along the column here possibly, and maybe a little more foliage on this side. Just uh, here and there. Maybe right behind your rows too, and maybe even a little bit overlap. And I take them right over, because you could have leaves that are going right over all the other leaves. And let me put that in a little more solid. So bigger leaves up here because this this maybe these leaves are coming off this big stem here. And that draw that that pulls you way up in, into the foreground here. These little some little overlapping. I'm just putting some little leafy things up here. All right, I could, you know, you can do the same thing over here too. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorite things, now you have all this white here. We, we could pretend that's the white of the column. And then what I like to do when I, when I have a, some white areas is just cast little shadows over them like this. Just kind of, whoops, um, this one. Cast little shadows over like around the columns like this. That's kind of fun. Maybe even here. Let's see. These would be small. Little cast shadows. Little leafy shadows. For, for white areas, I like to do that to them. If I have them. Maybe some over here. Just breaks up the white. Sometimes I leave a little extra white on there. 
because I, I want to do that. And it's very effective. Very, it works really well. Just small things. Um, maybe a little more shading on, on, the, on the right, on the left side, leaving the right side pure white. So you really get a sense of light and shadow on these um, lions. And then what we said earlier too, maybe if you want to throw down a few little leaves on the ground, little flower petals or whatever, please do. All right, thank you. And where are we? I just want to make sure I didn't go past anyone. Uh, there's Peggy, okay, there's Ethel. Okay. Okay. My lions came out a little big, but I made them smaller. Yeah. You remember, you can always carve into them with the background if you like. I did that. Yeah. And that's, that, that feels like a shadow on a white, on something white. You have to go pretty light like that. Yeah. All right. All right. I, might, I might make some of these, um, some of these leaves here in the foreground a little darker. Yeah. Not everywhere. I mean, but especially like right up in here. Let me get, let me get, you know, up in here, possibly a little darker. And you know, in some of these areas, I'd probably use blue, blue green. Yep, I got some of that, so. <laughs> yeah. This area, see, this really feels like shadow over here. Yeah, and whatever you want to do, the lettuce, you know, you, you threw a couple of those in there, sure. Um, but a couple of ni nice little leaves coming off this. Oh yeah, I kind of got stark there. <laughs> you know, coming off that might be nice. About it. I love the way you did your shadows. These dry brush shadows are great. Oh, thank you. Those look great. And if you feel like if you feel like you need to put a glaze on them, let's see. You know, just to bring them together a little bit. Because what I like to do is uh, keep it in the center part. Yeah. Yeah, I put More a together little and leave it head. kind of raggedy on the edges. Yeah. I put a little yellow down the middle and then I kind of blotted it because I didn't like it. It was too bright. Yeah. But, yeah. And then we're, again, what we said, by, by the way, your overlapping of the, um, of the uh, plants here looks fantastic. Thank you. Um, they really feel like they're all nestled in and really overlapping each other. Really, they really lead you into the piece. Um, if you wanted to throw down any sort of, you know, foliage or petals down on the ground, yeah. please do. Cool. And sometimes even, like I know that those columns back there don't have any vines growing up them. Uh -huh. uh, and, and I wouldn't suggest doing it on yours. Uh, it, you could if you want, but, but that sometimes what I'll do on things like that is I'll, I'll throw them in even if I don't see them on there. <laughs> uh -huh. so, just to let you know. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Diane. All right, Diane. Okay. Yeah, we do have a kind of a hard line here on the edge, so I would probably break that up with some, just, just take some foliage over that. And... Yep. I, I didn't go dark enough, I think, in my my lattice, I mean, I, my lattice work, I think I need to go darker. It dried Maybe too light, I think. A couple of blues up in there? Yeah, something? yeah. Or just darker all, overall. Not that dark, but. Okay. I mean, they are white, so. But let me see what I have here. Let's see. Just maybe this one. That's. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, they're darker than yeah. the sky, so yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some blue. 
And then, um, let's yep. see, a couple of more, maybe a little more leafage on these. Okay, really. sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, yeah, you put the petals down there. So yeah, I would just well, see what happens when you break that that line up with a little bit of a little foliage here and there. Yeah, I think might do it. Gotta bring it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it actually is pretty stark in the piece. So let's see. You know, another thing too, I didn't, I didn't really think of this, but these, if you look at this right here, this will be casting a shadow onto the ground. Um, so every time you put some of that down there, maybe cast a little bit of that, like a little bit of this. Okay. Down onto the ground. More leafy looking shapes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, If you like, maybe a little more shadow here. What do you think? Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, after I took the photo and sent it in, I thought, oh, you know, I never even really finished that side. So I think it needs to go down. I mean, you, want, you want to save some of these yellow areas, but, but, but you know, yeah. maybe, maybe a little, little mm -hmm. something in there. Okay. Other than that, I think we're looking pretty darn good. But just be a, uh, see your, your petals. They're yeah. almost the same size. Yeah, they're two. So I put a couple in there that are overlapping here and there. Okay, okay. Yeah. But what we, it's really easy to repeat the same shape. Mm -hmm. You're not really doing it that much. I mean, gosh, not hardly any at all, but I would put a couple in there. Okay. Yeah, all right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Welcome. All right, Betsy, here we go. Yep, I'm here. All right, nice. Are you, yeah, you, your, your, um, your ground lays really flat because you brought down your, uh, your horizon down a little bit lower. Yeah. Which is just fine. I mean, it's going to probably somewhere in there, right? Mm hmm which makes it lay down even flatter. See, the lower we break, the lower we bring that down, see, the low, the flatter it'll be. So if I brought it down there, we'd be really flat. So, and that's, that's fine. All right, nice work. Um, let's see here. So maybe these are a little dark, huh? For, for this piece or what you now um, the other thing to do is maybe put some some leaf shadows that are pretty dark over it not as dark as these though but like this this shadow right here this yeah. color of the leaf right there I take that color and and nestle these branches in a little bit maybe not that much let me, let me take these off here just a few here and there Just with, I think this color you're using right here is just right. Just to break that up. Because they, they look, uh, they're, they really demand attention because they're so, uh, they're so dark and the background's so light. So a couple of little things breaking it up, I think would work. And you know, you can always add a little rose there too, if you like. Right there. No, maybe not that big. You know, here and there. Um, what else? Yeah. Uh, if you throw down a little bit of shadow on the ground right under this, right below it, it's big. Just below the plants, it'll kind of uh, secure them to the ground a little bit more. And uh, I put a little shadow on this side of your 
column. And sometimes what I like to do, like, like I said earlier, I like to take some shadows and maybe bring a couple around, um, showing us the form of the column like it's round. So I'll bring a round shadow going around it like this, around here and there. That's one of my favorites. I do it on trees, I do it on everything. I'll, I'll use the shadows to, to give I, um, the, the contour, the character of the form. That's the word I was looking for. All right. Any any other questions? I, I think maybe a couple of things up into the lattice work might be nice. Looks like you got a couple of marks up there. Let's see. No, I could see something going like that possibly, or maybe up like that. Maybe well, a couple of vines. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, no, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. so things that twine in and from in front of it and behind it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, good, 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 good. I attempted that. But not well. Yeah, <laughs> I would do that. Okay. Now you got four uh, yellow ones right here all in a row. If you wanted to, no, if you threw a red over this yellow, it would be just perfect. It, would, it wouldn't, so if you wanted to break up that, um, I can do this little transparent one right here. If I threw something red transparently over that, see it won't, it, just augmenting the color a little bit might be, you know, just to break up the monotony of having four right yeah. next to each other. Yeah, On the other side, I think it's just fine. Um, if if they like these four right here are very similar. Mm -hmm. So if you take a little yellow and throw it on one, it might break that up a little bit. Okay. It's just the same thing in reverse, right? <laughs> Exactly. I mean, they're small things, but okie dokie. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Hector. Oh boy, Hector. Bob? Yeah. Hector had to go pick Michael up uh, near Angel Stadium. His car broke down. So he's oh, not. No. He texted me to have me tell you. So he said, okay. oh, he'll look at the, uh, the recording. Okay. So Hector and his calligraphic strokes. You know, Hector's all about the mood. Trying to create this, you know, by the way, this type of composition we did today, it's, it's, it's called a tunnel composition, obviously, right? Doesn't it feel like a tunnel? on everybody's piece. So just to let you know, I mean, moving the eye around, you know, it's funny, I didn't even think about it until I looked at his, because so it feels like a tunnel. So, uh, you know, I, I, the only thing I could, I could say on this is possibly some accents. Um, so if you wanted a little bit of red, here and there, you know, or I don't have pink. I do, ooh, I do, look at that, wow. You know, here and there, I could see little, just little accents and I would drip them on the way you're dripping on all your color, just drip it and leave it. See what happens, like this beautiful little drip right there, look at that. He probably did that on his way over to another color and said, oh, well, that, looks, that looks fine leave it um yeah i would just besides that i mean i think it's looking great now i mean i personally would have maybe used a lighter like a blue and dripped that down here whoops wrong color because i like you you know I've, I've said this to hector before but i like it when he drips in different colors um so I might've used maybe something in, in a possible, it could be that the, the blue might make a, 
uh, more of a shadow kind of color. So that might be fun. Drip right over your black, see what happens. I don't know. Just an idea. Okay. And you know, he, he went and uh, killed the value of that pure white. And I think that looks very nice. That looks actually almost exactly like what it looked like in the photograph, that value and color. Looks like just a hint of like a orangey pink. Okay. Thank you, Hector. And Jane. Okay, Jane, let's see. Looking very watercolorish. Let's see here. Okay, now, as, so as the light goes down on this left-hand side, we will get some, some shading. So I know it's hard to think of all that monotony as having uh, a sides to it all. But if you notice, I'm bringing all my shadows up. Right. You know. So you can just treat, because right now it, it, it feels like, um, like this side's in light and this side's in light. I would keep this side exactly like that. You're, this is, this right here is a, is a painting all in itself. And this right here is done very well. I would just think of it as being, having a, a side to it, like a right side to it. Right. And, yeah. and just working some shadows, leaving some light um, here's a weird, here's an interesting way to think of it. Let me, so let's take some foliage like right here. Uh, if the light's coming from the top and the right, then the stuff over here is mostly going to be in shadow. I know you're working with all this vegetation. Did, how can you actually see sides to this stuff? I know, but it does have sides to it. So I would just take that color, take it down into the left-hand sides into this stuff and work that up. Now you left out the columns, it looks like, and, and that's totally fine with me. I don't mind. Um, I can't see any really. Yeah, I know they're really, they're, they're very little in there. You don't have to put them in. Um, but I see that that side should be darker. It's all, there's no uh, contrast. Yeah. It's all a jumble. It certainly could be like that, yeah. And then as I've told a couple other people, so let's say we're shading this right here. We're giving a little shadow into there. Then as I go down into that shadow, I hit something a little darker down at the base. Mm -hmm. So hitting some of this stuff down a little bit darker down into the base. Anyway. So right. yeah, down there and then a little bit darker down at the base. You'll see, it'll just. Right. I didn't even see that the right hand side is really dark and in the shadow. <laughs> the it's weird, side. huh? Yeah. But other than that, I think uh, everything's, and th that's actually not a, not a difficult thing. Now, the thing is, is that you, you don't really have the columns in there. It almost just feels like you have overlapping vegetation, overlapping vegetation like that. So, which is just fine. Um, one of my favorite things to do is, when I have that situation, is pretend that there's something casting a shadow up and over. So I'll do this, I'll take a shadow up and over an area like that. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a fun thing that I like to mess around with. Um, here and there, I'll pretend there's other things casting shadows over, over stuff, but they, just think about it. Yeah. Other than that, I don't really see much, uh, I don't have any, I mean, you could throw, like we said, you could throw a couple, petals and leafage down here. I think we talked about maybe put, 
maybe bringing some of the um, of the uh, plants, a little bit of shadow over the side, just just to break up this edge. Mm -hmm. there, because you broke up this edge just perfectly and great. So just a little bit over there, I think that's about it. Okay, wait. Thanks. Another right. very challenging for me. <laughs> okay, well. But I, well, it's great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah, because if you think this is challenging, wait till next week. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Jane, it still looks good. It does. It does look really good. It's a nice looking piece. The Rob, left side of it looks like a complete painting. Rob? Could yeah. You use my next one. I'm sorry. I sent a file. Claire? Oh, did you do another one? There it is. Okay. Well, what do you think, Claire? I'd be pretty proud of this. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased, but I I need more color in it, I think. Not right, it got a little gray on you, right? Yeah, a little bit gray. Yeah, but I mean, value-wise, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, the values I think I got. Well, I mean, you know what, like I say, um, it's more important to get the values right than the color right, usually. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, that, that, that's the thing to do. So, one thing you can do to spice this painting up is uh, take some yellow and maybe even orange and just get them into these. Okay. Get them, just, just glaze them and don't, don't be shy with it. Really cake it on there, you know? Yeah. And if you get too thick with it, it'll be opaque. So you want to see through it, but that'll that'll give you some um, some color. Uh -huh. And then you know your sky, you didn't put the all the lattice work up there, and because of that, you still have a lot of light up there. So go ahead and if you want to throw in a couple of really nice reds, you know they'll illuminate up against that sky because you haven't gotten too dark. Well, what do you mean? right here too might be a good place to put a. A rose or something too. If, if you're looking for a little more saturation, those yeah. are some good areas to put put them. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, because a lot of times I, I'll look at my piece and I'll think I need more saturation, but you know, so down on the ground too, you could if you threw in a couple of rose petals, maybe a couple of green leaves, yellowy green leaves. Um, there's another way to get some color out of this piece. And believe me, I mean, it, it'll, they'll see the thing about grays. Here's the old saying about grays. Grays give life to your color. So you have a lot of gray. If you come back and really hit some special little poppy, poppy colors in there, they'll really pop. Okay. Now there, there's also the other option of um, like, let's say you have kind of a blank area right in here uh -huh. and you really want to give it some zing. So you come back here with some white and put that down and let it, let it dry completely. All right. And then come back later with your red and glaze it over Oh, okay. Wow. And it'll get it. That's basically almost literally the same thing I do when I when I do it in watercolor. I'll do that. Put it in white first, let it dry, and then glaze it over. Okay. Like a gouache white? Yeah. Okay. Gouache white or Chinese white. Either either one of them will work. Okay. Make sure it's really nice and opaque so it dries. So I, I don't use hardly any water in it. Yeah, okay. So it dries really opaque. Yeah. And these are some ways you can get some saturation back into your painting. Okay. Um, now you do have a lot of lot of sky in here and if you like that, just leave it. But if you want to, you know, you could incorporate a couple of more vines in here and a couple of more, um, let's see, a couple of more flowers and leafage. Okay. So. It's another idea. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. Let's get to Debbie here. All right, Debbie. Okay. Well, you really got that feeling that <clears throat> these shadows really, you, you put in a lot of those shadows and they really pull you back into it, don't they? Yeah, I, you know, I could see a little more. Some more, some, a little bit more leafage up here. And even, you know, even if you want to hit a little, a little rose occasionally. Any color you like. Now it looks like your light side got a little bit dark. And that can happen. But what I might do is actually hit a little more dark, believe it or not, on the um, on the shadow side here. Just just reinforce a couple of these darks. Well, here, let me let me. I don't. I hate to use black, but it helps me to get the value right. See now, now it feels like one side's a little bit more in shadow. And that's in light. So it gives you more of a feeling of the direction of the light. And uh, now if that gets too heavy and dark for you, just don't do it. I'll leave that up to you. You can always, I mean, if, if you like to use gouache, I like to use gouache. If it does get too light, I mean, if this, if this side does get too dark, you can come back and hit, you can come back with some yellow and lighten it up. And um, you can do that with white gouache and then glaze it over. Um, I've actually even taken the white gouache and added yellow to it. And by the way, if you wanted to lighten up this side of your piece, you could come back and hit some of that white with yellow in it and hit a couple more light things on this side and that'll work. Uh, you know, by the way, um, especially your, your lemon yellow, but you know, the actually the cad yellow too, they're very opaque. You don't really need to even add gouache. Those colors are very opaque. Try putting a little bit of yellow thick with har hardly any water in it. Put, put a little bit of that if you wanna lighten things up and believe me, it'll do it. So that's a little thing to know there. Your, as a color in watercolor, as any of your colors get lighter, they get more opaque. And um, I'm probably wrong on some colors. There's probably some stain colors I'm wrong on on, on that, but um, like I think an Indian yellow doesn't work that way, but, but yeah. Especially yellows and oranges, any, especially cadmiums. Oh my gosh, they're, ve they're very opaque. So that's a thing to know there. Other than that, I think you're looking pretty good. Um, shadows look good. Woke up these edges really nice. Let me clear out some of my gook here. And you know, this right here is just begging for a branch. So you want to give it a special branch, you know, lost and found kind of branch up in here. Of course, darker colors, but you know, I might do that. And I, I keep it more lost and found. So, you know, I, I can't really do it with this, but you know, break it in there. So Rob, I missed yeah. uh, your first comments because I've been dealing oh. with some UPS problem with a huge bottle shipment of wine, okay? Anyway, <laughs> which I really need badly at the moment. Anyway, it is <laughs> so um, you were saying, because actually I was fed up with this. <laughs> Huge shipment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so could you give me just sort of like a, the key point? I just honestly, I was busy trying to make sure that it was actually coming and not being sent back. This well, I, I, I was just saying that you're, you're, now by the way, you have the um, recording too, just so you know. Oh, good but, to know. Um, so. This is, uh, I, I was saying that your lights are a little dark and your shadows um, could use a little light. Yeah. So, so take a little bit of the cadmium yellow, put it on pretty thick. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you can see mine right now. No, I can. But uh, uh, watch, I'll take, I'll take some cadmium yellow and um, I'll put it into this. Here, I'll just, yeah, hold on, let me see. Did it dry on me already? Here, let's see. I'm sorry, this is lemon yellow. Look at this. Can you yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, look how it lightened up that. So if you have an area that's too dark, you could just kind of lighten it up like this. And that's, that's straight watercolor. That's no, there's no gouache in that, but it, it actually is semi-opaque. Right. I, like I really like that. I think I'll do that. Oh. Well, <laughs> here's my other comment. I'm particularly like yeah. feeling atrocious about the ground shadows. I actually don't have much of a problem with them. Well, um, okay, then I'll, I'll live with it. <laughs> they're, you know, uh, try throwing some leaves and stuff on the ground. Mm -hmm. Try my little trick of putting some dark leaves in the shadow and some light leaves in the light. And, you, you know, try it with the rose petals and things like that, too, if you like, if you want to play yeah. around with it. Um, yeah. You wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe what it'll do. And... If it's something you haven't really tried before, it's a great thing to just to mess around with. But so let's say we have some leaves out here in the light and then you try the same thing. You know what I can do here? Let's try this. Let's see. Uh, let's see this color. So if I take a couple of these in the light and then take them in the shadow, I'll get them dark. Oh, that's great. I think that yeah. will help. Since it's so overworked, I might as well add a little more. <laughs> hey, you know, that's what I do to paintings all the time. If I, if, I, if I have an overworked painting, I will, I'll beat it to death just to try to learn something. <laughs> By the way, you see this area right up in here? Yeah. I love the way you handled the paint there. Oh, thank you. I just, that, that's just so watercolory, right? I love that. So... I know I suggested putting a, uh, a branch in there, but you know. Leave it alone. If you're loving the way you like that, if you're loving that, just leave it. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have Michelle. Ooh, you framed it. Look at that. Sign it and sell it. Geesh. Okay. What else am I going to do here? I can tell you. Do you want me to critique my own stuff? <laughs> yeah, do. Do. Okay. So, you want to you know, critique my... everybody else's too? I'm just No, <laughs> just mine. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't like how my columns on the left, they kind of end up looking like a picket fence rather than columns. So I could fix that, but I may not. Um, I, my, on the left? My, yep, on the left. Yeah, see how they're more square? Because I don't. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean they're okay, and they're, okay. but they kind of kind of stick out there. My my foliage doesn't have a front and a back, so if you go right in the middle near the lions, you need to do something with that to pull that back and pull the foliage in the front. So either I need to like gray the foliage out around the lions so it pushes that back, or something with the front foliage because it's like it's all one thing there you know what i'm saying front to back yeah and maybe just dampen it and light them up a little bit yeah that's the, an idea. The I shadow. Can do that too yeah and i probably could put some more darks underneath the vegetation on the right side on the bases down there right on the sidewalk where you were showing other people that you could put a little more dark in there because it would be darker i mean it would be darker right next to the vegetation yeah um, what else oh there's two yeah that's a good move a little darker in here yeah well just a little darker like you're telling everybody else yeah um those two those two um plants there the the ones on the right there those are too much the same i need to make those different um, okay you know i should have you guys do this Critique your own work, and then I'll add my two cents. This is a great idea because, um, 
you have it on recording because you now you have it on recording and um so if you try to sue me i have no i'm just joking no <laughs> um no but it works for me because then then i'm learning because i need to critique it while i'm painting it yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah. oh, okay that's not working but i don't notice things until i've taken a picture of them yeah often. and i'm 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 not sure about my branch there in the front. I mean, it's almost like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Is it too dark? Something. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure I like that, but I don't know why. Well, I think it's this area right here. It brings a lot of attention to itself. Yeah. And, you know, if you were to put some vineage in the background, it wouldn't. And maybe yeah. real sketchy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Real, real, real sketchy. Real, like, like nothing, you know? It would, it would it would detract from this because this this okay. right here becomes very attracting, uh, and let's see, so yeah, it's the contrast that does that. Yep, you're right. Okay. So, and then, you know, for your columns right here, you were talking about, um, you you know, you you could throw usually when you have foliage up here, there'll be a shadow down below it. Yes, so that's you, true. Yeah. You throw a few little shadows down below it like that and maybe, you know, going over and then possibly grasses and uh, uh, foliage coming from overlapping it here and there. It breaks all that up. So, yep. so, and you could do that here too, possibly on this right hand side too. So that's, yep. And then, um, uh, yeah, I agree. I would, I would make, I would vary those a little bit. These two. Yeah. The two twins. Yeah. And uh, and up here, but th those are small things. Yeah, but anyway, this is what people think of when they think of watercolor, right here. When they go, I want to buy a watercolor painting today. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's because it's because it's very light and luminous. See, all your colors really illuminating, and it has these because you surrounded these pieces of saturation with something pretty dark, and maybe even complementary, right? Green and red, and um, you'll <clears throat> it just has that uh, special quality. Oh, thanks. So do you think it's too blue? Do you think I use too much of, I, I use a, a, a marine blue because I really like the purple that marine blue makes. Yeah. Um, you think it's too blue? I mean, are those greens too blue green throughout the, do you think I need more warm no. greens? Okay. No, no, I like your blue greens. I, I love a blue green. I mean, it's a great way to break up your greens. Sometimes greens can just get all the Green. same, you know? Yeah, yeah. You get this red greens, yellow greens, blue greens. You just got to throw them all in there. In this case, you want a smorgasbord. And okay. most of the time, people don't put in the blue greens or the red greens or the yellow greens. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Thanks, Rob. This piece is looking nice. Yeah. I put in a little bit more dark right under these plants. I think that yep. really does yep. something. Okay. Thank you. Okay, what did I do? Oh, I stopped sharing. Didn't I? Oh, let me see. It's uh, this one. Okay. And we have Hen uh, Henry. Oh, hey, Rob. Is that, do you have another one? Um, yeah, I can send you another, another one. Just do another. Uh, sorry if the uh, orientation was wrong. So you can, That's okay. Uh, I'll go to George. Yeah. Let me send you another one. Okay. All right. Hey, George. Are you there? All right. Well, looking pretty darn good. Wow. That's pretty, uh, I'm surprised you didn't use your crazy colors today. 
This is almost unlike George. <laughs> yeah, it's almost unlike George. I, I would say uh, that's a pretty academical painting, George. Let's see. Just practicing his uh, his academic chops today. Just fine with me. Let's see. That's the academic medicine, George. Yeah. <laughs> that's, his, <laughs> that's his old career showing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> maybe these dark blues are a little dark, huh? A little stark, possibly. If they are, I might lighten those up a little bit. Just, just a little water and rag. Just stamp them a couple of times. That should pull it up. And then right, right under these. See. By the way, if you'll notice, I'm saying the same thing over and over. Because almost everybody does the same. Has the same issues. But you, you really got this, this sort of wall of shadow over here, you know? And this is feeling like, you know, all in light. You could hit some shadows along the edges in there. Maybe, maybe tuck a couple of back in there, but that's nice. So yeah, a couple of those. You, by the way, you see how he did these shadows on the ground? Looks like he laid down some water and did them because he has a soft edge to them. That's a really nice way to treat a shadow edge. I, I should have done that on mine. I sort of dry brushed mine, but oh well. And like we talked about, maybe a little bit of uh, vines and such up here with some. Yeah. With some leafage and stuff. Maybe a couple of. Uh, Those up in there, if you like. And you, by the way, the, the cadmium red is pretty, especially if you have a vermilion. I don't know if you, you don't have to have, but the cadmium red is a very opaque color. So if you wanted to, let's say you lost a little saturation out of here, take that cadmium red and right straight out of the tube. Don't put any, I mean, just enough water on your brush to keep it together. So a very dry brush and that will, you wouldn't believe the kind of uh, pop you can get out of it. So you can still put it on opaquely. All right, nice looking work. Pretty academical, wow. That's that George Sonneburn then, right? That's the other George. Is this George? Oh, this is, okay, that's why. That's why I thought this was George. Oh, this is, yeah, G George D, I see on the bottom. Uh, like, that, that I just was, saw I the George, I, thought, I forgot. Uh, yeah, 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 okay, I was confused too. All right. Yeah, so yeah, was that, I. That's not... <laughs> a different person. Okay. Well, anyway, George, uh, I don't know how to say your last name, Dubush. De, De uh, anyway. Um, Dubosh, this is George. Oh, okay. I'm up in three. So, you weren't here, so I didn't know. I <laughs> just started going off on it. I okay. Outside. Sorry. Well done, George. All right. Nice work. Uh, Rob, can you check my email, see if this one is correct? I still haven't gotten yours yet. Let's oh, see. okay. Uh, no, it says no. Okay, well, I'll look back here in a minute. Let's go to, there's Claire again. Let me send again. There's Dar yeah, send again. I don't know why I didn't get through. <clears throat> oh, I, I tried to send two, maybe just send one. Okay. Okay, Daryl. Oh, All sir. right. And... I'll go darker. Darker? <laughs> yeah, on the... Actually... On the, on the left side, I didn't really get to the shadows on the left side. Right. That's, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So I, that's what I would do. I would just take some um, some shadows yeah. and things. You, you see how a lot of your strokes are, um, they're kind of scattered. So you, you just bring it together with a few shadows. I think you got it. Yeah. A couple shadows, yeah. 
And the two right, wow. right here, they're kind of scattered in here too. I might take a, by the way, I love your red tree in the background. That's great. That's a great move. Very, very effective. Yeah, but how about the soil? The soil on the planters, yeah, maybe I gotta put more red in there. Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that'll, that kind I of- I have clean. brown here, but I don't know if that works. Or... Yeah, they clean up the edge of the walkway there, kind of sharpen that up. Well, I don't mind the, the edge being a little bit uh, rough. But what I was seeing what was very effective is some people were pulling some of their foliage over the sidewalk and I thought that worked pretty good. So, yeah, I, I could see a couple more, a couple more um, shadows on this side, bringing, bringing a lot of this together. Okay. So if you like shadows, it's like this side's in light, this side's in shadow. With, with a few little lights coming through it. Now. I should have tried to get more roses in there, some more well, flowers in the left side. You have plenty of area where you could hit a rose, like there, yeah. or even out here. It'll still work. Uh, these are light enough to hit the rose. I'm to mix a, a pink color. It's a very hard to make a pink color unless you got. Uh, Pure uh, white, yeah. Yeah, unless you got uh, some pink paint, you know, opera. What do they call it? Opera or something or something? Yeah, opera rose. You know what you can do? Take take your magenta and add a little bit of white maybe, to maybe it. Maybe orange. Orange, yeah. There's a lot of orange yeah. flowers out there, too. Maybe an orange might uh Sure, hit an orange. An orange will work really well over anything that's yellow. So like in here? Yes. Those are good areas. But if you hit a little bit of white with your magenta, you'll get a really nice pink. Oh. And it'll cover too, so. White paint or white gouache? Or... Yeah, uh, either way. White gouache or uh, Chinese white, either one. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, that, I'll try that. Yeah, yeah that'll all pick it out, uh, make a pink. Yeah, a little, yeah. little red and with some white paint, okay. Yeah. Now, I like to yeah, lose I or find, I, I would um, put a little bit of green, like a, some, some of your green leaves right over. Yes. Right, right over the tops of this, yeah. So it really covers. Let me see, I, I'll try with this one. Here and there, like it's, and I might give uh, these branches a couple of little, little stems off the side. Okay. Yeah, just a couple like that here and there. Um, and just just throw, make sure you kind of nestle them in with a, a few little leaves going up, over it here and there like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get it. I didn't get to the left side at all, but uh, I'll work now on it. Remember what we said at the base of, at the base of some of these plants, maybe give yourself a little bit of dark down there. Yeah. That'll, that'll sit I mean, them down. There should be dark. There should be a lot more dark in there. Some, some yeah. shadows and then just darken the soil up there. Yeah, the, I think the soil could be darker, yeah. Especially in the shadow. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Rob. Can you check it again? Oh, sure. There you are. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, just to do the number one, yeah. Okay. Clear. Okay, this is correct. Yeah. All right, yeah, you left a lot of, uh, a lot of white. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Too much white, huh? No, no, that's, that's fine. Sure, mm -hmm. that certainly could be like that. Wow. The, this area right here feels like John Singer Sargent. He does this quite a bit. He'll have these real dry brushy areas with just mm. very, the way you're handling that's very Sargent like. Yeah, look at Sargent. God, you're doing very Sargent like things. Yeah, I have his, uh, I have his book, yeah. Yeah, it, look, it looks like you've been copying them or something.
<laughs> I think. I wish. Yeah, I did some copy before. Yeah. I used to copy them like crazy. Yeah, we maybe uh, used to copy sergeant in one of your class. Just try. Probably. Would you guys want to do that? A, a copy of a a master? Yeah. We've never sergeant. done that. We could do it. Yes. 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 Please, yeah. Wow. That would be great. Yes. That's a pretty positive response there. How about? Well, we could do a master copy. I'll write that down. Great idea. <laughs> well, I think. So, I'll garden, just say sergeant. Garden, uh, garden with fountains. I'll say sergeant because. Um, yeah. He's really a whole bunch of types of art all wrapped up into one artist, master yeah, sergeant. I, master I always master. hear you uh, say mention referring to his work. Many of them may be um, also interested. What, what was that? I couldn't hear you. Oh, if uh, those uh, artists' name you always refer to. Um, always, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean. For my painting, Rob, I was trying to imitate your painting, so I confess. Uh, <laughs> I, I was imitating a master. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but. Yeah, you are a master yourself. So. Well, well, thank you. I, th I think, uh, you know, what, the funny thing about masters is that usually, you know, you, you, have, you gotta be dead for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, by the way, if you guys, let me show you something here. Um, Cause you're not, I don't, I. You, you see these little semi-opaque areas, how we got this blue here? Yeah, these are gouache. So there's some gouache, they always adding gouache to there, little, little special little, little hits, little hints of gouache here and there. That's mm -hmm. a wonderful little area of red, yellow, and blue. Look at that. And it really breaks it up nicely. Thank you. Um, it's a nice piece. Yeah, I, I like I, all the white, by the way. I like <laughs> that you didn't throw all the stuff. I, I like the white, so. Yeah, I think it, uh, it, it, this class really helped decoding your our, uh, your process. And uh, uh, thank you for gener generosity for sharing on this. Oh. Six. Well, that's why I'm here. I mean, yeah, honestly, a lot from this class. to me, that's what the whole point is, you know? Yeah, I, I, I like the, uh, you put the, uh, the dark and the light, you know, the key points first. <laughs> that's very yeah. uh, different. Uh, the, you, you must have a, a whole picture uh, in your mind, I think. Oops. I don't know. Usually, I'll come at it with a feeling, and uh, I, I try not feeling, to think about uh, it too much. That's what I, I just yeah, whole, yeah. Whole th it's a feeling. Uh, so you really are in charge of the things. Yeah. And you start from everywhere, not just a single point. Yeah. yeah. You just kind of work your way around the piece a few times. Right. This is a really nice piece. Thank I know you. what you were saying about. You were saying something like you, you, you tried doing this a few times and you couldn't get it right. I think yeah. you got this one right. Oh, that's a very compliment. <laughs> I, I, very I, I do. I like all the overlapping. Uh, yeah, that's the, the part I wasn't uh, sure which one comes first, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, now I, I still don't know, but uh, <laughs> I got the idea. Um, and I like the way you did the shadow on the ground, really kind of lost and found. Uh -huh. As I said, I like I, all I, hard I, edges in the one in my demo, but I like your soft edges. They're, they're really nice. I think the vertical line really makes different. I noticed the other people's uh, shadow. Uh, yeah. I also have a yeah, some uh, I, I, I sketch I did uh, with uh, horizontal, uh, strong horizontal lines. I really yeah. think yeah, this vertical line really uh, leads your eye in in yeah. insight. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed you didn't put in these 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 uh, pulls going across. Uh, yeah, that, that's on the photo, but uh, you don't you, you didn't emphasize on that. Actually, there are some uh, uh, they're not solid pulls. They, they also have like grids, uh, yeah, vertical oh. grids. Yeah, so that's uh, yeah, verticals. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, really lead your eye in, don't they? 
Right. I, I, I think that really makes uh, the, the, the composition of difference. Oh, yeah. But my perspective may be wrong. <laughs> it's fair. I, I, I don't even care. Okay. I, you know, I, I don't even notice. I don't even notice. Uh -huh. If your perspective isn't 100% correct, mm -hmm. I don't care. But, but see, these lines are, they are converging. Okay. So, but if they're not totally, who's to say whether these lattice aren't perfectly, you know, a lot of times they're kind of messed up. Mm -hmm. But who cares? I mean, it looks great. It looks very natural. This piece looks very, it's a very natural way of working to it. How, how did you do the, the, the uh, bronze uh, on the, uh, just like a flower bed, uh, outside the, just a, and under those uh, plants, uh, outside the cement ground, you know? Did, Here? Did you do it uh, today? I, I, I don't recall. So uh, on the original, I see Are these? Uh, they're, yeah. they're darks and light uh, on the, uh, yeah, the bronze, the, the, the soil. The browns, yeah. Um, you know, I, well, I think what I, I, I think I just put in like a burnt sienna or something like that, pretty close to oh, that yeah. down here. And then yeah. I, and then I put in a pretty dark shadow over it. Yeah, that's what I see. There are two different. Uh, so I, yeah, and I see something on the right, on the left side also. On, uh, the, I thought it was uh, pots. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's a soil also. I think. But yeah. that that really um, grounded. Yeah. Nice. That's a beautiful piece, Henry. Thank you. Thank you for your teaching. You need to enter that in a show or something, you know? Uh, I should uh, say after uh, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, Thank that's you. a nice piece of work. Okay. Thank you for your approval. By, by the way, I've seen a lot of painters paint this, this, uh, this motif. Not only the motif, but I've seen painters actually paint right from where I was painting. <laughs> There's Daniel. It's a it's a popular place to paint over there. Wow, oh, nice color, Daniel. Wow. I love these colors. Driving me nuts with Thank this. Thank you. Color. Look at that. Well, I mean, I, I could say I I mean they, they feel like they're almost all in shadow. Except for the tops and in you know, certain places. So, I mean, if you could really strike it with some white on there, might give it a little more pop. Um, but I, I really don't care. I really like the color. Color, look at that. You, this is a good example of what I'm talking about when I say that, um, that your shadows can have all this color in them because they, they take on the color of the things that are around them. And in this case, you have all these pure pigmented flowers around these. They could take on all kinds of colors. So why not just go crazy with it? <laughs> and uh, Daniel took the reins and went crazy with it. I love it. I could be crazier. I'm thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> I yeah I just took your photo and zoomed in. Right. Just say. Exactly. Pop in a little through and I like the way you uh, you gathered up all of your foliage here into a, like a form. You gave it form and contour. Well, that, thank you. Well, that's one Good thing sure. I've been fighting with. Well, you did that well. Um, Yeah, that's about the only thing I can say is maybe some stronger white. Now, I don't know if I'd put any. This is one of those paintings where I don't know if I would want to hit that with some pure white. If you want to, that. That's, that's why I, I, I debated between that and throwing the uh, neutral tint behind it. And I decided the neutral tint was more in fitting. Right. 
I might want to soften that neutral temp with some object, some, some, uh, something in it. So it just isn't straight block. Right. I like to do that too. I, you know what I'll do? I'll take a little neutral tint and add a red to it. And you get this kind of ruddy brown look. It's kind of neat. So that's one of my favorites. I'm, I'm, st I'm still working on it and changed a little bit when I watched the critiques, but. Uh. Yeah, you, now I can see right here, this is, here's another example, everyone, of what he's doing. He's putting on the yellow, the yellow green so thick. See how almost semi-opaque that is right in there? That's lemon yellow. Yeah. It's um, like translucent. A little. You can barely still see through it, but it, you, can, you can actually get fairly opaque even with watercolor. See, nobody ever thinks of using watercolors thick. And, you know, in, in one of these uh, transparent watercolor society shows, they, they probably um, call the transparent watercolor police on you and have you removed. <laughs> <laughs> but no, honestly, uh, so that, that's, that's one way to lighten up an area. Yeah. So that's nicely, and it's a beautiful looking green. I love it right next to that red. Nice look. Beautiful colors though. Really nice color. Thank you. You are, you have, you've got the heart of a colorist. No, no question about it. I know I've said that many times. It just, it just astounds me that an accountant who's, who I always think of as this very analytical person, you know, and, and here you do all this wonderful intuitive color. You, you've got a good balance there. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> At least somebody thinks so. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd have you do my accounting though, looking at this piece. <laughs> it's too, it's yep. too intuitive. I'm sure you're like, well, Rob, you know, I'm think, I feel like maybe you should, um, uh, well, you know, it's no big deal. I mean, you never, you've never said to your tax preparer, be a little more creative. Uh, I, I don't think I have enough money to do that. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Not enough money to be creative, Dan. Here, here's some money. Go be, be creative. No. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much, Dan. That was great. Okay. Uh, now there's a George. George Somborn. I'm here. Yes, you are. Whoops. I don't know how I did that. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> so now you have, you know, tons and tons and tons of uh, extremely saturated color. And so if you, if, if you wanted to, well, you're doing it right here. Um, uh, shade any of this, let's say, if you wanted to give any like shadows and, and like for instance, here you're using like a, a rose color, right? Um, That's yeah. Let's see. I have an opera and orange and violet. Oh yeah. The opera rose color. Pearl red and cad yellow. So I'm shading that with. Well, let's let's try. I have a dark red. I don't know if it, but if you use a dark red, you know, you can keep up the saturation. And, and still have a light side and a shadow side. Yeah. If you wanted to. If you want to keep up, just, just keep it the way it is. But I mean, um, if you want some shadows to off to the left, I'll use a dark red, probably uh, magenta. Okay. And yeah, to emphasize the color in a, in a rose arbor. Yeah. And then if you want to, in, in um, give some of these whites, the columns and the lattice, if you want to give it some shadow. I, I noticed the shadow in there was actually darker than the sky. But I, would, I wouldn't really do that in your case. I would just kind of, uh, let's see. Now that's blue, it's very close to your sky color. So I might use something lavender, like um, if you wanted to go into some of these shadows on the left sides, possibly. Yeah, but I wanted to just sand out as an arbor. Oh yeah? Yeah. Is that what that's called, an arbor? It, isn't it a rose arbor? 
Well, it goes all the way around. Okay, I didn't know that. I should have known that. Okay. Well, nice looking piece. Nice color. Nice, a um, lot of expression in there. And you know what? It really fits with your other pieces, which right. I really like. You know that, right? So, I mean, because if you were to have a show, it would really work as a whole idea, as a theme. Interesting. Yeah. We're interesting where you're going with your theme. I really like where you're going with it. That's, it's very personal. Yeah, well, I think the Holbein paints and Henry's brush uh, have changed me. How about that? Wow. Uh, thank you, George, for, for your, for your con a tribute to the brush. Actually, your brush work is wonderful. I was going to say the. It is. I'm very. You, you just love those colors. And your branches, George, just so organic. Those are really nice. Those twigs yeah. in between the flowers, very nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You like definitely want to go there. <laughs> I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to go there. Yeah. George, let's go. <laughs> I know. I think we have to make a reservation. <laughs> I think it requires a little green or blue pill. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, George. Thank you. Beautiful yeah. work. Thank you. All the uh -huh. time. Okay. And Toby. Oh, nice. Oh, pretty. And there's your, there you, you're going back to your theme in there, I see. Yeah, the dots have resurfaced. <laughs> Aha, the dots have, they always find their way in, right? Okay. Yeah. And, okay. Now, right, if you're, if you're feeling like these lines right here are, are getting a little bit, You know, too, if, you, if they start falling in a line too much, what I like to do is maybe take a, a, a few of, of the leaves over it and just overlap. And it'll break up that here and there. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. just, just a little bit breaking, breaking that up, that's all. Um, maybe a little more green. You got a lot of yellow. And the yellow, I mean, just glaze a little green. Um, if you use Prussian blue and a little bit of cad yellow, you can glaze a little bit of that over and that'll give you a little more variety. So keep, keep some of your yellow, I mean, but definitely break in a little bit more green here and there, if you like. Um, possibly. Then right, some, some of these darker, Silhouettes. Now you went very, very light with your branches, and I think that works very nicely. Um, Thanks. Maybe a couple of little leafy things off to the side there. That that's kind of big, obviously, but here. just little, just to break things up. Mm -hmm. Remember too, everyone. Just, just. It's it is a little weird that they, there's not more leaves and stuff on their sidewalk. I think they, they had just gotten, somebody just went past me and, and blew off all the, you know those guys with the blowers, right? They love to follow me around. I don't know what it is. I think there's a conspiracy out there though. <laughs> 1, Did you know they have 1,000 gardeners at the Huntington? Oh I know, God. but you, you'll hear, if any of you have taken my class for a while, you'll notice I'm always complaining about those gardeners. Go away. Leave me alone. Okay. Um, yeah, and I could see maybe some some more saturation in your reds and stuff here once in your in your roses. Mm -hmm. And you have plenty of white areas. So, and by the way, a red will go over this yellow very nicely. Okay. Yeah, because the the red has a little bit of yellow in it. Uh, the cad red. So if if you if you put it on pretty thick, 
it'll cover you'll get a you know if you're losing some saturation try it same with the yellows um you know i think just a little more saturation in your color a little more greens a little more reds mm -hmm. yeah do you think um like a yeah. little bit of glazing with more of a violet or um, lavender on the shadow on the ground would be helpful well i wouldn't want to get you much darker than you have there okay if you do just accent it subtly like with something like this mm -hmm. this color there uh because it's pretty it's pretty dark right now or, or where you're hitting it dark is pretty dark so yeah i just meant i feel like it's like a little bit of that it, yeah, it's just to, to tie everything together, or will that just be too much oh. time together? You know what I no, mean? No, I think it. I think it would be just fine. I don't. I, I think that would be just fine. A little bit of that, sure. Yeah, I think that works very nicely. Um, yeah, that's about it. All right. That area is a little weak. <laughs> <laughs> not quite sure what to do there. Some stronger shadows in the steps. Maybe this this area here, I think it was kind of greenish, huh? Like a sage yeah. color. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Might add a little bit of, you know. All right. I think this is, you know, yeah, I think it's just fine. Like I said, more shadow on this side. A little leafage and then a little bit more saturation here and there. A little little spicy colors of saturation, like like a like a red up in here, or you know, strengthen up these reds a little bit. Okay, sounds okay. good. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. And mm. Mitsuko. Yes. Go. There's your style. Uh. <laughs> That's what I always expect to see. Okay, great. If you, if you think it's uh it's a style that's good. <laughs> it is. I know you might just think that's just the way I paint, right? Well, then that's great. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, some people find it very easy just to be themselves and, and just paint in their own way. Um, you know, I've had a really weird career that's, you know, as, as an illustrator and, and a mural painter and a set designer or whatever, you know, I was always trying to paint in different ways. So I didn't really hone in my own style enough. So it's it's uh, you, you it's know, not this, as easy as for some people. Anyway, yeah. yeah. This time I I wanted to go uh, <clears throat> along with your uh, painting, mm -hmm. the process. Yeah. <clears throat> so I did, but at the same time I I use the uh, this is min mineral. Oh yeah. So it it gives me a more like even if I follow you, yeah. just more watery uh, effect. Oh yeah, a different paper will totally change the look. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so so that it could be more my style. Yeah. Uh, rather than ac academic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember what I said earlier about maybe, maybe making a little bit darker in here. Okay. And that's just just closer to the objects. So what will happen is, you know, because these objects block the light, you might get something darker, you know, on this side here and there. And that's just one little thing. <laughs> in the, in the shadow shadows itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the shadows, and then you just grade out, gradate them. Just, just, just as they get closer to over here, get them a little darker. That's all. Okay. Um, um, and I, I've said to a couple other people, maybe, maybe you. This is totally up to you, but if you wanted a little bit more shadow in here, mm -hmm. so this side feels like it's a little bit more in shadow. This side feels like it's a little more in light. Um, some of that possibly okay now do i like the way it looks without it i think it looks just fine like that too so 
It's totally up to you. Those are just some suggestions. Um, I love all your different color roses. It's just great. I I even you know because I like contour. I, yeah. I contour just the, maybe one side or something. Yeah. Uh, Look at the way she brought this rose out right here with the background. See that? Perfect. You're doing it all over the place. Yeah. See how she stages? She stages it with some background. Now she has light behind this one. You know? Fantastic. And then everything looks really nestled in. You, you, you went and took all these little shadows and things like over things and it was all nestled in and complex like it is. So that's about it. Oh. <clears throat> statue is okay. Um, statue is okay. Statue, uh, if you wanted to, you could contour it a little bit. Contour? Okay. Maybe just take the background in and. and... Uh, yeah, I, I did try to do it, but maybe because of the, the paper, just. <laughs> well, that's up to you. I mean, okay. if you really want it to look like that lion, then I would get. But if you don't care, if you're just, just something statuary back there, then, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really make mine look like the lion. I noticed the lions are kind of sitting very proud up there. So I, I really arched, arched the back here. And I, I, put proud. The, <laughs> I put chairs on because it, it looked- oh, yeah. It, it looked kind of vacant on yeah. there because uh, a statue is kind of like right hand, right side, a little bit, yeah. it's not in the center. So. Yeah, I think that works. Yes, I, I, I think the chair works. Now I'm tempted to put it in my piece. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why I critique all you guys' work, so I'll know what to do in my piece when I get, home, when I get done. And I, okay. I put the unnecessary white dots at the end. Yeah like all over, <laughs> kind of like, you know, just to have an accent or just to have an abstract feeling. Right. Yeah, you just, it's funny how your intuition just knows what to do. Just, just trust your intuition, it knows what to do. Now, I am noticing right here, you got this uh -huh. and this and this. Too much. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering, um, a couple of little counter moves might help. Ah. Uh. So possibly just, just a, a, maybe another little stick coming off that way. No, you know, not too big and thick, but yes. maybe the size. Uh -huh. You know, they, they just, just to counter. Yes. Maybe I'm going down that way. So it's no big deal, but it, it'll kind of um, uh, move the eye in different ways. Mm -hmm. So, so we don't, you know, don't yeah, get distracted I, I, by I need a branch, branch of the branches. <laughs> yeah, little branches. This is a good move. This branch right here, I love this branch. Kind That's of a little bit Chinese painting. <laughs> I did. Yeah, it look. It looks like it looks great. It's a great. I, it's a great way to <laughs> close off that corner there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And Shelly, we have two, Shelly. This one, is this your sketch? That's a sketch. Cool. And you'll see, you'll see why later. Oh, this, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Because it got really wide. <laughs> and I- Oh, that, like that's when you just, you, you just take the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the map board and pull it in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very blue. I like this rose here. So now by, by taking a big rose up in the foreground, now that forces the, pers that's called force perspective. And so what she did is she took this big, big rose, whoops, wrong tool there. Yeah. So, 
by having some bigger ones up in the foreground and some smaller ones back here, and maybe even a really small one back there, you know, you, you force the perspective, even if it wasn't quite, a, quite that way. So I, I even think there were, it was a couple of um, ones way back there if you wanted to, but nice looking lions back there too. And you, so you notice how she went pretty, pretty non-saturated and bluer back there. And then the most saturation is up here in the foreground. So good. I could even see more. Really pop some saturation in here if you like. Yeah. Here and I could see a few moves in there. Yeah. I, I like how you just hit it all. Look at, she just treated this whole plane. I mean, like, almost like this. Let me show you. Like a plane of, um, I, I can't really hit a thing in there. So, like a big wall. Yeah, but I would, yeah. I would add that that's what, if I were to self-critique, yeah, I need more light penetrating through that side because it looks like the side of a building almost and the shade, the shadow it's casting doesn't make sense. Even though I was trying to contain that as all one unit. Right. Does that make sense? Because like the yeah. amount of light that's coming through the columns on the ground is doesn't match what's happening on that side somehow. Yeah. Take a little gouache if you like. But can I say something about this? Yeah. <laughs> I am amazed by the circle at the end of, you know, it's almost a perfect circle. Because, it goes like this? Yeah. Right. It's the tunnel thing, but it, the smaller circle, you know, the bottom of the so-called wall and the top of the wall, it curves. And the other side curves. And I think that's wonderful. It's like... Alice in Wonderland, you know, coming out. <laughs> but almost like a spiral. Yes, it's it's a very, and it, it has a mysterious aspect. Yeah. It, it, it looks good. It kind of reminds me of the Guillermo del Toro scene, you know, where the darkness is on the right, you know, and you just don't want to walk over there. You know, oh. you're on the left side of the path there. Oh. So all I'm doing is bringing up a little bit of light in there. Uh huh. And you might want a couple of little, little special leaves off to the side. So what I'll usually do is I'll just throw in a big mass, and then I'll hit a couple of little edges. Yeah, that so would just, help. Yeah, just for that that idea that might be something to bring into it yeah uh, i really like the way you handled all this right here this is just great you've got uh you've got a look to the way you work in watercolor i i'm liking what i'm seeing in these watercolors wow i haven't seen you do too much yeah as you can see, the same principles. I mean, you know, sometimes you have to work backwards, but it's the same principles. The principles of art never, never change. It's just the way the techniques change. Your your approach to, um, you know, your approach changes, but the technique doesn't. I mean, the uh, the the idea of like, for instance, you see how she takes all of her. Well, you know when I'm talking about grouping your masses. See how she just grouped it all right there? It's a big, it's a big grouping. And there's hardly any information at all in there, right? It's just a blob with a couple of edges. And that's all she needed. Also, look what she's doing here. Light on the dark, and then silhouetting, silhouetting the dark on the light here. All very effective things. Here she's got a little cutout right here of a light on a dark. You know, I might suggest you doing the same thing over here with some of your contours and taking a couple of those little cutouts 
like you did there. Over these are begging for it right here, just on some of these little contours. Woo! And look at the way you trend. Look, I love the way the shadow moves around the corner right here. That's that's not easy to do. That's really well done. Very nice. All right. Thank you very much, Russell. Good. Thank you. Lynn. Oh, very light. Is there another one, Lynn? Yes. Yes, there, there is. is. See, I knew it. I knew it. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so far behind, Rob. Okay, here we go. All right. Let me get my little splotches off there. <clears throat> okay. So we have a we have your darks in there. You've established some darks and you have some very light shadows. I I I I think you'll probably find later on you'll want to deepen these shadows a little bit, which is just fine. And I like they are going from dark to light very nicely. Oh, and I'm not through with it, Rob. So that's why yeah. I really need your help. Thanks. So yeah, right. So. I would just make sure you build up this side over here, mostly with some shadows. Um, I, I'll use black, but you know, use something green, please. You know, build build up some shadows in there. Build up no some problem. shadows, Le leaving plenty of light in between, like in the demo. But you need kind of a a lot of shadow on this side and a, a bit more light on this side and really punch those yellows. I, I would go really, don't be afraid to go screaming with those yellows because they're gonna, believe me, here, here's what luminosity does, okay? You, you have a straight yellow like that, you put a yellow down and then you put the shadow over it. When you put those shadows over it, that's what makes it feel like things are in light and shadow. These are like little, let's say little leaf ends going over all that yellow, just like I did in my demo. Uh, it'll, it'll work for you, I'm telling you. So yeah, right. Uh, by the way, your lines look pretty darn good. Don't you think? Let's see. Uh, let me use that other tool here. Maybe a little, oh, that's huge here. A little darker, it goes under his jaw, then it goes around and something like that. And then if you want to shoot some color in there, remember we said this earlier, just, you could hit a little bit of something like green in there by a little yellow. Maybe on some of the undersides, a little orange. Reflected lights. <clears throat> so yeah, you know, give me some vines, give me some leaves. Now right now, you have enough light on this piece to where you could still hit some really nice uh, roses, but hit the roses first. I'd hit some big ones in the foreground. You know, they don't have to be giant or anything, but you know, just, just, just larger, maybe like that rat, or maybe not that big. And they'll still pop. They don't have to be, you know, not every rose has to be screaming red. So I think about doing that. And I'd hit those first, by the way. And, and paint everything around them. That way you'll keep the saturation. All right. So since you don't have a whole lot, I mean, you're only about halfway done here. Um, but I would hit some dark at the base of these too, right? Some dark. This one looks pretty good. I, I know you know what to do because you did it perfectly on that one. So, you know, okay. 
down at the base of these. This is very nicely done. I didn't see that. Yeah, you're just working your way forward. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Rob, so much. You're welcome. And Phoebe, I think is the last one. I think is Phoebe the last one. Did I miss anybody? Okay. All right. All right, Phoebe. I'm slow too. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Nicely done. All right. And Phoebe's new new to the class. So hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, Phoebe. Hi, Hi. Hi Phoebe. Hey, we're we're a, we're a very supportive group here. We're all we're all about learning from each other, and you know. So anyway, um, background. Yeah. Now here's what you see. How you overlapped? Let me see this. See how she overlapped these? Overlap. Not only are they overlapping the sidewalk, but a lot of them are overlapping each other. And that's how you get that, uh, that congruency, that everything sort of feeling like it's part of the whole, you know? Nice random strokes here too. This one's going that way, this one's going that way. They're nice, nice. Okay. So it just looks, you know, maybe like, maybe more. Maybe a little bit more shadow over on this side. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm using the wrong thing here. A little more shadow. I don't want to go right over your roses, but and feel free to put more roses in there if you like. Yeah. And uh, you have plenty of white over here. I just go right over. Sometimes I'll put a rose right over something like that and you can see the background right through it and i don't even care and you know what it looks great i just leave it so um what else um i yeah, i do questions. have a crit of my own yes the the yellow i've never used this before so but it's it, it's a great thank you for showing us that the yellow green on the left is too green and too dark um, compared to the yellow green on the right. So I, I don't know, maybe I can lift some of that and make it a little lighter. But I, I need to leave, I mean, I need to add more leaves and branches on both yeah. sides. I think you're okay. I think you're okay. What you could do is just add a couple of uh, really, really light ones around occasionally here and there. Oh. Really light. And then, and then just when you paint your dark ones over, like you're doing right here, these dark ones, uh -huh. um, it'll, you'll have more variety in your value. And uh, it'll give these dark something to bounce off. Good. Yeah, I, I might even go, see how dark you are right here? Yeah. I might even go that dark, but. The way you're doing it right here up here is perfect. I'd hit, I'd hit your silhouetting dark leaves over it like that. And then occasionally really pop a dark one in there like, like you are here uh -huh. or over here. So I like to start them off just like you are here and here uh -huh. and then come back and hit some dark, real dark ones on there. And that's how you get that shocking, like right. luminous feeling. Um, let's see what else. And then any more roses you like, you know, any more roses. I could see possibly more. Yep. Here, not there. Maybe, maybe a couple up there if you like. I think magenta, I would think, you know, cad red, maybe even the orange if you like. <laughs> I need to get more paints. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, you, you can do a lot with red, yellow, and blue though. I mean, you can make an orange out of your red and yellow. You can make, um, so yeah, yeah, but yeah, you'll you'll hear funny names of colors in here like opera rose or or uh, you know, I but I generally only ask that people have a warm and a cool of each of the primaries. So you have a a red, yellow, and blue, 
And so like cadmium red, lemon yellow would be your yellows. And then, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me do that again. Cadmium yellow and uh, lemon, lemon yellow for your yellows. Cadmium red and magenta for your reds. And ultramarine blue and, and um, Prussian blue for your blues. And that's all I use. Um, so really I'm only using three primaries and a warm and a cool of each one of the primaries. That's it. Yeah. And the rest of them, you can just add, you, you can just add a million colors to that. So this is looking pretty nice. I mean, you know, I don't, um, remember what I said too about, uh, my favorite little trick about, uh, adding a little bit of like, Shading under your, let's say you have a branch here, maybe it'll create a little bit of a shadow down there, maybe here and there. Just, On the columns. Yeah, here and there. You might not even hardly see them in the end, but uh, I'll, I'll pull one over on this side, maybe like around the column like that. Right. Down there. And, and little leaves and leafage and things like that too. Break it all up. Like, like I did in the demo. Just keep it kind of broken. Thank you. The kind of watercolor feeling, yeah. Le and also this, this horse edge you have right here along the sidewalk, I, I might throw a couple little, like you did right here, perfect. I do more of that. Okay. On this right side, not, not on the left. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and welcome, by the way. Thank um, you very much. Uh -huh. We, I think, did I get everybody? I think I did. I think I did. I don't see anyone I missed. So if I did miss anyone that's listening <laughs> and left, I think I got everyone though. Okay. If I did, just email me and scream at me and I'll, uh, I'll email you a crit back. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you, Rob. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Um, uh, Thank a great you. Thing. I like the idea of doing a master copy. I'm really thinking about doing that now. I'm looking forward to doing that with you. Okay. If I do, it'll be a sergeant probably. Please. Yes. 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 Oh, Both boy. <laughs> I'm, now I'm thinking about maybe doing it next week. What do you guys think of that? Fine. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. It would be right. great. Thank you. I'll research them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. I'll Bye. talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. All right.